connect with a woman. It's a serious, I ran out of sources. Got me a bitch out of town and she always be like, oh, we riding on horses. Oh, we still riding on horses. You talking to ones in them Porsches. Some days I feel like a king. Some days it feel like a dream. I'm real good at reading the strategy just because I got to watch out for the scheme. They ask me if I like the fame and I always just tell them it's not what it seems. But I can take one for the team. As long as we get us a ring. I heard getting money with the whole squad. Every day we trying to get across the goal line. Making plays, trying to come up on a goal mine. This the season we've been waiting for the whole time. Good evening, football fans. Texas Southern University welcomes you to today's SWAT content. University Panthers and your Texas Southern University Tigers.
Check testing five four three two one. Mike check testing five four. Testing one two five four three two one one two three four five. From Houston, Texas, at BBVA Compass Stadium, this is Tiger Football. For 10 months, the Tigers from Texas Southern have been putting together what they hope will be a championship season for that man, head coach Daryl Asbury. Now, their very first challenge of 2015 comes from their arch rivals, the Prairie View Panthers here at BBVA Compass Stadium as we get set to kick off the 31st annual Labor Day Classic in Houston, Texas. Well, welcome to our broadcast on Root Sports. I'm Butch Alcindor, along with former Houston Oilers and Wake Forest star John Henry Mills Skills. Welcome to the broadcast booth. Thank you, Butch. I appreciate the invitation. I'm happy to be here. It's going to be a great year for the Tigers. It looks like it right now. Of course, the matchup, this matchup, is all about tradition and bragging rights. But when you look at the history of this series, the Tigers have fa fared very well. They have a 20-9 and nine record, but you know what? It's a rivalry. And that's true, Butch. Hey, rivalries may go out the window because you never know what may happen with these close games. Because I, I believe last year, tax, t t Tigers came out with a win. A uh, two-point win, 37-35. Yes, yes they, they, that is true. Now it's time to move on to our Players to Watch segment, and we start with the TSU quarterback. Number eight, Jonathan Bowen. This young man will be making his first start for the Tigers. Yes, Butch, hey, he's, this is his first start for the Tigers, but hey, he's a rare commodity, Butch. And listen, he can beat you with his arms and his leg. But keep in mind, Butch, this is his very first game, and he's got to shake off some of those jitters. He may be a little nervous early, but we'll have to see how the young man performs under pressure. But he should have plenty of support tonight. Played his high school ball at Cypress Lakes. Should have a lot of friends and family here tonight to support him. Now on defense, TSU will be relying on linebacker Darian Claiborne this year. The junior actually changed his number to number one this year, and he's hoping to play like he's number one, providing the big plays and the leadership on defense. And that's true, Butch. Big plays and leadership goes hand in hand. Instead of, he's going to set the tone on defense. Hey, Butch, he led the team in tackles last year, even though he missed three games. Can you believe that? I know that. He had 77 tackles, missing three games. So this is the guy they look to to keep the trains on the track on defense. 
Meanwhile, the Panthers will be counting on senior running back Jonta Hebert to get things going for them and to get their ground attack going. Of course, he's a senior from Baton Rouge last year. He had a whale of a season. Yes, I think Hebert had over 1,000 yards rushing. You're going to see a lot of number three. And he also is right now as listed as one of the preseason All-Americans. Hey, he's going to be a great, great, great addition for PV. And we talked about how this series is all about tradition. It's all about bragging rights. And this year especially, it's all about change. You see Mr. Hebert there, they've been counting on him tonight, but it's all about change because there's a lot of changes on the field. Starting with the Prairie View head coach, they have a new head coach, Mr. Willie Simmons. He's a young coach, and he's taken over a program at Prairie View. That's true, Coach. Even though he's a young coach, but he knows what to do. But, hey, he has some friends on both sides of the ball, I think. And at TSU, Coach Darrell Asbury has hired two new coordinators. His defensive coordinator used to be the head coach at Prairie View last year, Mr. Heisman Northern. How yes, tough sir. is that? That is tough because he knows hey, what each team is going to do. And But he, like I said before, he's going to have some friends on both sides of the ball. Yeah, that's the main thing. you got friends on both sidelines. Also, John Shannon taking over as offensive coordinator for the Tigers. Should be a whale of a ball game tonight. You know, we're just getting started. Showtime is coming up in just a bit. We will be back in just just a few minutes with the kickoff between the Tigers and the Panthers. When we send an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect him to be professional. I expect him to be on time. I expect him to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Compass Stadium where the Tigers are getting set to take on the Panthers from Prairie View in the annual Labor Day Classic. And this one has been a classic the last few years. But as we get ready to start, TSU, as you can see, that's Earl Jimison down there making a presentation to Doc for his many years of service. I think it's over 40 years of service. That is outstanding. Uh, they just had the coin toss down on the field, John Henry. The Tigers won the toss, but but they decided to defer, so they're going to be kicking off. That means we'll see Eric Medina getting the ball, getting the kicking off the ball to the Panthers. So how important is it for TSU to come out here since they're kicking off to go out there, get a three and out, and force the Panthers into a punt? I think that's the reason why they, they chose to kick off because, hey, it's very, very important to set the tone, and defense always set the tone. They definitely do, and, of course, the Tigers – and we mentioned the changes right before we went to break, so we're going to get to see the effect of Coach Heishman Northern's defense going against his old team right off the bat. That should be interesting. Still down on the field, there are a couple more ceremonies going on, and there's a lot of picture taking, and uh, everybody wants to celebrate this one and remember it forever. Of course, one of the things, how, you know, you, you're opening this game, a lot of teams 
play their first game and it's against a, a, a team that's not quite up to caliber. In this case, TSU is having to open up with a conference game. You know? Well, I mean, by opening up with a conference game, it gives you an idea of what your season is going to be like at this point. So, I mean, I think that's a good choice by them to open up with a season of opponent. Of course, they had a really big camp this year for the Tigers. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit because Coach Asbury had a lot of things going on that he wanted to use to try to help them bond as a unit. You know, they had a couple of several new guys coming in from community colleges, and he just wanted this group to get together and work well as a unit. But, uh, again, it's a rivalry night. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, too, because throughout the week, Man, you found out it's, it's a rivalry, but it's not a hated rivalry. It's, it's, a, it's a fun rivalry. It's a big family. Yes. I mean, and it's black and white. It's a big family because there's some houses that are divided. But, hey, that's what, that's what this is all about. That's what it's like. And, and sometimes in families there are disagreements, and there's a little scuffle here and there. I know my brother and I got many of them. <laughs> a lot of families, and that's what's going on tonight. And it's, it's going to be a, a really good ball game to watch, a lot of fun to watch. Tigers get set to kick it off, and it looks like Jonta Bear is one of the guys back to return for the Panthers. And Dominic Weaver is the other guy set to return for PV. Now, you know, it's funny to watch this because we, we haven't mentioned it yet, but Prairie View will also have a starting quarterback taking over for the first time. DeAutre Smiley will be behind center, and this will be his first action tonight, so he may have some of the jitters on the other oh, side I do, also. I, I do think so. I really do think so. Of course, in his case, though, he has a fine running game to rely on. We touched just a little bit on the fact that we talk a little bit about that running game, and we mentioned Jonta Abair. We're also going to see Courtney Brown tonight, and he played. He came on and had a real fine year two years ago. He went over 1,000 yards, actually had a knee injury last year, so he didn't get to play much, and that kind of opened the door there for Abair. But... Uh, that's kind of like, that's Prairie View's Cajun connection because A Bear is from Baton Rouge okay. and Courtney Brown is from Lake Charles. Oh, wow. <laughs> they said they know where the pool of talent is for running backs, I guess. Uh, that's where they went. You know, I, I don't know how we, I could forget to mention this, but everybody at home knows that we're in Houston, Texas, so it's another hot and humid night Tell me about here it. In, Huba, in, in Houston, Texas. Eric Medina set to get this one underway at BBVA Compass Stadium. His kick is deep. Whoa. It is taken by Weaver, and he is knocked down in a hurry. Number 19 there. That's a big hit. That's a big play on special teams. Raheem That's McMorris is down there in a hurry, and he made his presence fell. Watch, he's down there quickly with a big hit right there. Oh, I remember those kind of hits right there. That's what you do on special teams. You've got to go, got to go full out and go down there and make the play. Big play, so that's exactly where Prairie View will start first and 10 with the ball at their own 14-yard line. So they will go right there. And as I mentioned before, they have DeAutry Smiley coming in at quarterback. Now they have some young receivers, so everyone expects them to really rely on that running game early in this one. Mm. And the Panthers uh, mo motion early on. The guy came across in motion, and an offensive lineman jumped, so they're going to back him up five yards right there early in this one. So a big break for the TSU Tigers. Right. That's, that, that's, that's where those jitters come from right there, guys. They're not ready to play right now. Well, you get out there, and the band's playing, and you have mm -hmm. a little noise, and, and it's, it's a little distracting now. So they're going to start first and 15, and you can see the ball is marked down at about the nine. Smiley hands it inside, and he is wrapped up. That is Bear, and he had nowhere to go. He is taken down quickly by a lot of Panthers right there, a lot of Tigers right there. Let's see who's plugging the gap here. The handoff inside, and there is just nowhere to go. That's Claiborne. That's Claiborne right there. Making his presence felt coming in from the outside. Definitely. Gained a yard on the play, so the Panthers are looking at second and 14 coming up here. Looks like they're in the empty set. Smiley again, hands it off. Bear has some room around the left side, cuts it inside, and it's a nice gain for Bear before he is taken down by Travis Hutchinson. A big play by the Tigers, Travis Hutchinson coming on 
for the stop. Good misdirection play there. You can see he faked one way, he comes the other way, and nice gain right there before number 17 took him down. A little zone read there. Big third down for the Tigers. Third and about five. Now we have Trey Green in at quarterback. Number seven. He fakes the handoff. Zone read. Keeps zone, it. Yep. Tucks it in. He's got a lot of room. Trey Green has some green grass in front of him. Green is going, going. One man left to beat. And he is in for the touchdown. A touchdown. So a stunning run by the Panthers getting on the scoreboard first. That was Trey Green in at quarterback on the zone read. And he kept it. And boy, I tell you what. Everybody, Dondre Dobbins made a nice chance to try to pull him down there near the one-yard line. But as, as we it, take a it look at like him. It looked like a little GT action. The guard tackle pull. He's still on the, sealed on the edge. Hey, door's wide open. And this guy is the guy they said that has all the wheels, and we're getting a good look at it right there. Yes, sir. Dobbins made a valiant effort right there to yank him down near the goal line, but couldn't get him. The missed tackle right there in the backfield. That was... Fine play there, and you see Dobbins coming on for the for the missed tackle right there. He tried to yank him down. He goes down, but he's in for the touchdown. So the Panthers break out in front. Mm. Six to nothing early in this one. 13 minutes and 14 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Owen Houlihan is on for the point after, and he kicks it up, and it is good. And the PV Panthers take a 7-0 lead in the Labor Day Classic. Of course, now is as good a time as any to throw in a plug for Russell Athletic, the athletic uniform for the SWAC. You can see TSU wearing the Russell uniforms with the maroon and gray. On the other side, the Panthers have their military, salute to military uniforms on tonight. So Russell Athletic providing the uniforms for the SWAC and the TSU Tigers and the PV Panthers. So now, Mr. John Henry Mills, we have a 7-0 ball game early on. So we're going to get to see the TSU offense. Can they come back on the field and answer the bell? I think they can. I mean, it's just the first play. Hey, it's a long game. That's just the very first quarter. And you know, TSU Tigers are in this game. Oh, no doubt about it. It's a, a, a big play. They wanted to go defensively and set the tone defensively. That did not work out. So now you have a chance to get the ball back and to make a big return. Brad Woodard is back to return. He's one of the guys. And Austin Watts, number 10, also back for the Tigers as they await the kick. From Owen Houlihan. You know, one of the things we talked about earlier is how in camp, Coach Asbury was doing a lot of things to try to get this, these guys to bond together, and we'll talk about that. They went to movies together. They had a bowling outing where they got to introduce the players to the people on campus. And all those things contribute to, you know, helping the team grow as a unit. And it's all about building trust. That's why they do those things. Because the team needs to be, build some jail, continuity, and some, just some trust within each other. Houlihan's kick taken in right there by number 10. And he is knocked down hard. And that is where the Panthers will start. Excuse me, that is where TSU will start. First and 10. The ball's going to be marked at the 33-yard line. And the first snap for Jonathan Bowen and the TSU Tigers. Bowen calling out the signals.
Hands it inside to Great Rashad cut. Bernie, and what a cut. Great cut. What a cut. A big shot in there by Rashad Bernie. And he is stopped right there by Terrence Reynolds. We'll take another look at it again. Jonathan Bowen with the handoff. A good, quick feet right there, and he got a big, big, big pick up there. Number two in on the tackle was Damon Jackson for the Panthers. That'll make it second and about five for TSU. Zone. Bowen hands off to Bernie, and he is stuffed right at the line to scrimmage. Several Panthers right there. First off, number 22, Jalen Coleman in there making a big play. And as you can see right there, they just stuffed that thing off. There's number 10 in there also. Hakeem Barton helping to just shut that down. Key third down for TSU now, third and about six. Bowen back in the gun, looking downfield, flips it underneath, has a man, Malik Cross, he scrambles around and finally has nowhere to go. He's pulled down right at the line of scrimmage, so Prairie View is going to get the ball back really quickly. Number 32, Marquise O'Leary there to shut that down, and so now... We're going to check out the Panthers are getting the ball back again. Dominique Weaver back to return the kick. A little tunnel screen there. Trying to get something started. Of course, for TSU, they have the best punter in the SWAC in Corey Carter, and he's going to get a chance to show us why he was a preseason all-SWAC pick. Quarterback to punt. A flag is down. He gets it away. It's high. I'm sure it's illegal. Legal, illegal participation. Guy came off late. So that's that's the reason why that flag is down. That was Dominic Weaver and uh, not much going on, but we'll check and see what the flag is. And that's something. The first game of the year, you expect to see some penalties, right. don't you? Our referee for tonight is Roderick Holloway. Let's get the call. Illegal motion. Hmm. Number 39 on the offense. Number 39 prior to set, getting set, went in motion and never reset. The penalty will be five yards added to the succeeding spot. Hmm, I didn't First see that. Down. Well, there's, there's more of them on the field than us in the booth. So <laughs> <laughs> that's not very But a guy did come off late. I thought it was illegal participation there. Pretty sure they'll take it on the kick at five yards from the spot of the foul. Panthers are going to start first and 10 from the 20. As they come back out, and let's see who's going to be a quarterback this time. How do you like those uniforms uh, PV's wearing there? You didn't have anything like that back when you no, played. No, sir. No, we didn't. You didn't, you didn't have the swag. <laughs> it's a lot of swag. <laughs> Trey Green back at quarterback again for the Panthers. Why not after that last run? Hmm. Hands it inside. Jonta Abair has some room around the outside. Turns the corner before he's finally knocked out of bounds by Dobbins. Dondre Dobbins up there in a hurry to deliver the lick but not before he picked up a first down. As we take a look at it again, he cuts it inside and then bounces back out. Right. Right now, the Tigers are pursuing so fast to the football. He, he bounced back around the pursuit. They were in good shape to actually make the play there. Yes, sir. Prairie View operating out of the no huddle thing. That, that's the, the, the popular trend going on mm -hmm. right now. Hurry up offense. Trey Green back to pass, throws underneath, and he has a man. Ooh. A big hit right there. Oh, he's it's a really big hit. Rayshon Givens was the receiver, and he goes out of bounds. But DeMarco Lestreps. Pass. 
Going to be second down for Prairie View and about two yards to go for the first down. Trey Gein slips the handoff inside and he's met right away. Big number 94 was right there. That's Derek Lyles. Lyles met him in the gap and said, come back here. You're yes, not going to get away too far this time. A big stop Derek right Lyles. there disrupting the play. That's a big play for TSU. They need that play right there. Third and, third and short. They can come out with a, another big play and get them to punt. And there goes a whistle. It was third and short. The whistle on the play, and it's going to be a timeout on the field, and Coach Asbury is getting his guys pumped up. This is a big down, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, Right now, we're going to pause for it with the timeout on the field. We're going to take a timeout here with Prairie View leading the Texas Southern Tigers 7 0. We have 9.34 to go in the first quarter. When we send an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect them to be professional. I expect them to be on time. Uh, I expect them to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of B.A. Compass Stadium where Prairie View is facing a third and short right now against the TSU Tigers. Trey Green at quarterback. Fakes the handoff to Courtney Brown. Green keeps, but he is hit by number 27, Jamal Lucas. You talk about filling that gap quickly. This one will depend on the spot because it was very close. Very, very close. What a fine defensive effort by That's the Tigers. That's a great spot for us. I think I really think they held him there. Looks like they're going to take a measurement here, and that was a, an interesting call because they had been running uh, Jonta Abair. He was on the bench. Trey Green actually made the fake and kept it himself, and now this is a big spot here. We'll take a look and see if they were actually able to make the first down. And it looks like they are short. a little short. A little so short. Coach Willie Simmons, in his first year as a head coach, now has a big decision to make. The ball is just over his 40-yard line, about the 42-yard line. And uh, we don't see the punter on the field yet. So let's see what the PV decides to do. They have a big decision to make. That's pretty interesting. Normally you would punt at this situation. But hey, I guess he sees something that we don't. 
What would you do in this situation? You I have a 7 just, nothing lead? I would punt because you want field position. That's the that's most important part of the game. Because um, if you lose field position, gives TSU some momentum there, and we can take it in the score. They're back in the huddle, at least giving the impression that they're going to go for it. I look for a hard count here. Try to get TSU to jump off sides. No, they're running. Jet sweep. No, quarterback keeps. He ran a little version of that zone read, and then Trey Green kept it inside. Demetrius Johnson is there for the stop. But Green did a really good job of reading the defense that time. You saw him ride the running back there, and then he kept it once he saw the hole and took it inside for the first down. Exactly. So the first gamble of his career for Coach Willie Simmons, and it paid off. First down for the Panthers. Trey Green looking to pass, under pressure, floats one up, has a man, and he dropped it right off the fingertips. A little play action. Rayshon Givens was that guy. Oh, that I mean, was he close. was down there. He had a couple of steps on the defender. The pass looked like it was going to be overthrown, but actually it wasn't that bad a pass. It kind of went off his fingertips there, and it's incomplete. They've only thrown a couple of passes, and each time they've tried to get the ball to Rayshon Given. So uh, they have their receivers are young and experienced, but obviously they have some talent. All right, that looks like that might be his their go-to guy. A timeout. Panthers don't like what they see on defense, so they're going to call a timeout. That's the second choice timeout to play review. So what do you think about using two timeouts in the first quarter? I mean, that looks like I mean, that may come. That may may not may may, may, may not come in handy later if they need it the, um, towards the end of the half. So you never know. No doubt about that. Of course, you can catch the TSU football replay in HD. That after every home game, it comes up on Tuesdays at noon. Only on Root Sports, the home of Tiger football. So if you missed tonight's action, don't worry about it. You can catch all that action again on Tuesday. So it's, it's early in the season. You see that young fan, he's having a good time. I don't think he even knows who's winning. I think he's, he's, he's for the band. <laughs> but you know, you're early in the season and you have a ball game like this where you're down on the field and it's so hot and humid. You know, you're coming out. How much does that take an effect on everything? I mean, if you're not prepared uh, mentally and physically, that can take a toll on your body, especially with this Texas heat. PV has a second and ten. Trey Green putting Courtney Brown in motion. Throws it the opposite way. A little tunnel screen. He has a man. That's Kadero Hodge on the screen. And he is taken down by Andre Joseph. Right there, gets the ball out to him quick, just a little short screen. Mm -hmm. That's what we call a little tunnel screen there. Hodge turned it up in a hurry. Little zone. Hand off inside goes to Courtney Brown. He slips off a tackle before Claiborne finally yanked him down. So we've seen uh, Darian Claiborne making his presence felt early in this one. Definitely. I wish he would drive that man backwards instead of throwing <laughs> him forward and giving him more yardage, though. <laughs> Big hit by Claiborne. Now we have a second and five coming up for PV. Trey Green calling the signals. Fires over the middle and it's in and out of the hands of Jonta Abair. He had a little room. The pass might have been a little behind it. True. Let's take a look. He threw it a little bit behind him. A little him, bit behind him, but the way it was always said, if, it's, if, you, if your ball hits your hand, you must catch it. That's the rule. Or he has to give me 10 push-ups, one or the <laughs> other. You're going over that middle, though. The head tends to get on a swivel every once in a while. <laughs> a little gator arms. He was open underneath. So we have another key down coming up. This one third and about six for the Panthers.
Green has some time, throws it over the middle, too high for his intended receiver. Good coverage there by Andre Dobbins. Dobbins right there with a nice play, but we have a flag down on the play. Illegal formation. Too many men in the backfield, looks like it. Illegal formation, number 56. Number 56 is lined up in the backfield. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So the penalty is declined, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. And Now, we saw Coach Simmons go for it on fourth down the last time, but it was fourth and short. This time it's fourth and about five and a half. And uh, we don't see the kicker yet, so it looks like they're going to go for it again. Mm, they must not have any faith in their kicker. Right here, you would kick a field goal. Trey Austin. Trey Green getting the play from the sideline. Green, back to oh. pass, keeps up the middle, and he's pulled down mm. right there. Big tackle by Amir Bloom diving in to drag him down. It's going to be close. I think he got it. They are moving the stick. Let's see. They're going to wait. They might get, they're probably going to need to measure this one again. Because it looks like he was pulled down here, but he didn't go down. The and second effort gave him the first down. Amir Bloom on his rush. He broke away and came back and pulled him down from behind. And they're going to like they're going to take another measurement again. Second time on this uh, drive. So we're, we're getting an indication early of uh, what type of, of type of coach Willie Simmons is going to be. And he's apparently he's going to go for it a lot. And he just got it. That's another first down. Coming into this ball game, we really thought PV would be running the football a lot, and, and that's exactly what they're doing. That special player, the A Bear there. So it is first and 10 for the Panthers. Trey Green at quarterback hands it off to A Bear around the right side, turns the corner, picks up a block, and A Bear is knocked out of bounds at about the 14 yard line. But we do have a flag down. Archie Rice. Up quickly for TSU to make the hit. Looked like a little moving in the backfield. Oh, wow. Hold Number 83, offense. 10-yard mm. penalty from the previous spot. First down. It looks like it was on number 83, Cameron Smith, for the Panthers. He's their leading block on every play. They're falling by him, behind him all, the whole entire time, especially with Abraham's speed. You never know what may happen. Well, but a lot of times when you see a guy with that much room along the sidelines, somebody on that outside has got somebody locked up pretty oh, good. Yes, and so they, they caught him that time. That's going to push the Panthers back to a first and 20. Hmm. Trey Green gives off the handoff inside. Around the left side. Still running. Number 28 is Fred Anderson. Anderson came on last year, and he also had a good season. Dobbins again up to knock him down with coming up with the tackle. But Anderson got some time last year, and he showed that he can run the football also. Good block there, and you saw Claiborne getting there, and then Dobbins on to finish him off. Second and short for Trey Green in the offense. Oh, blitz. Flips it out. To number 80, Rayshon Givens again. Looks like they have a little screen set up there. Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson caught him around the ankles and yanked him down. TSU Tigers looking to come up with a big defensive stand here. We got first 
and 10 with the ball at about the 15 yard line. Trey Green looking to throw again under pressure. Floats one into the end zone and it is incomplete. He had a man down there. Raheem McMorris though made a fine defensive play. He was trying to get it to number 80 again. Rayshon Givens. Mm -hmm. See, lobs it for the corner. Yeah, it looks like Rayshon Givens is their go-to guy. They're trying to get the ball to him as many times as they can. He had a shot at it. Uh, could, it would have been a tough catch, but yes. he did have he did have a shot I at it. I think he would have been in bounds. Though. Second and ten for PV. From Ball is loose and it that's, is recovered. That's, that's exactly what TSU needs right now. Looks like number 36. Joshua Brooks. I mean, could, could that be any better than what the doctor ordered right there for the Tigers? Yes. Let's take a look at the replay. Kind of messed up the handoff right there. The ball comes out. I think the quarterback just put it out there a little too far. He, he, I knew he planned to keep it the entire time. And, and there he was again, Joshua Brooks with a big play on the sideline. We're going to pause for a timeout. We'll be back in a minute with the PV Panthers leading Texas Southern 7-0 early in the game. I'm Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. What a beautiful shot of Houston. Look at the city and the beautiful lights as we come to you from downtown Houston at BBVA Conf Compass Stadium. We'll take a look at some hard running right there as the Panthers on the move, the pass inside to number 80. He's been the big target tonight. They tried to go to him again in the end zone. That's Rayshon Givens. No good there. And then the ball just slipped right there out of Trey Green's hands. And the coming up is Lucas with the uh, recovery for the Tigers. That's the break the Tigers need right there. Joshua Brooks with the recovery, excuse me. Joshua Brooks. So TSU is going to start first and 10 right there at about their 21 yard line. Jonathan Bowen over the middle, pass is complete to McLeek Cross, and that is a first down for TSU. That young man looked pretty confident on that one. Marquise O'Leary is there making the stop for PQ. You see another look, good pass. Tigers with two wide outs set wide left. Bowen under center with a pitch back to Rashad Burney. Inside, he bangs his way for about a yard before he is stacked up by a host of Panthers. Hakeem Barton, one of the first to arrive on the play. 
You might know to Richard, the Tigers have three new running backs this year, basically. And they really expect some big things from Richard Burney. Of course, he came over from Mississippi Delta Community College. He, he comes in at 5'11 and 215 pounds. Ooh, that's a big boy. That's packing quite a load there. Second and about nine for TSU. Bowen passes down the sideline. Has a man, passes a little too strong. Looks like a little late hit on the quarterback there. It's out of bounds. He was trying to hit Mark Edwards. But you're right, the flag is down right oh, where oh, yeah. Jonathan Bowen threw the pass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no reason he should have hit the quarterback. First down. So you called it, John Henry. They got him for roughing the passer. Bowen was trying to go down the sidelines to to Edwards. Mark Edwards, who's a graduate student who transferred over from Tulane, he's a burner. He okay. he can stretch the field. So now TSU with with a little momentum going. Because John Shannon, the new offensive coordinator, they do run out of pro sets. They change for formations a lot, and that's a lot for a young man to handle. But so far, Bowen is right on top of this. Bowen looking to pass again, under pressure, scrambles out to his right, in trouble, and he is taken down right there by Jalen Coleman. A little pressure coming from up the middle. They got the blitz going, and... Actually, they caught Bowen, and he goes down. As you can see, him scrambling around there. Mm -hmm. Looks like we got a player down. And there's an injured Tiger down on the field, and it looks like J Jalil Mathis Ellis. Of course, he's the preseason all-swag center, and he's down on the ground. So uh, is, he is not a guy you would want to no, lose. That's the quarterback in this team. Yes. You, don't, you do not want your center to go down. He's getting up pretty quick, so hopefully that's a good sign. That's good if he's walking off. Maybe on a night like this, hopefully it's just he's cramping up a little bit mm -hmm. because you just want don't you want to see that big fella out there. Oh, he's starting to jog now. That's a really good sign. Second and 23 here. Tigers have some ground to make up here. It's a good down to come up with that blitz. Fine play. He made a play, and he trapped Bowen for the sack, and it couldn't have. Uh, Jalen Coleman coming up with that big hit. Bowen back to pass again. Again, the pressure comes from the middle. He slips away around the outside. Still has it, and he managed to pick, pick up a couple of yards. So there he was turning, getting something out of nothing. But you can see again, the pressure showed in a hurry. Right up and, the and, middle. And that's Akeem Barton again. So we've called out his name a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Third and about 17 for TSU, 18 yards to keep the drive alive. Bowen from the shotgun. Looking around, dumps it off to Bernie. He's out in the open spaces, makes a move inside, and he's finally yanked down. But it looks like he's going to be five yards short of the first down. Meshack Williamson was there for the stop. You can see Bernie coming out of the backfield. He just kind of slipped there, and Bowen dumped the ball off. So he, he had a couple of nice blocks for him. Yeah, it looks like it was a set play there because uh, the tackle and the guard came out to block for him. So it was definitely a set play. Texas Southern's going to have a timeout on the field, so they want to think about this one. It's so, four, fourth down and about six or seven yards. So I'm pretty sure they're wondering should they go for it or not, but I mean, I mean I'm pretty sure Texas Southern is going to be do the smart thing and probably just pooch it down there and try to lock them, get them down there, pin them down there in their own end zone. This is a timeout just to talk to your team and you know make sure everybody's on the same page. Of course, while we have a pause in the action, we want to remind everybody you don't want to miss the TSU women's soccer team take on Grambling. That's September 25th 
at 7 p.m. at Durley Staley Stadium. Those tickets are on sale now, so log on to tsuball.com today. You know, this has been a, a it seems like we've seen a lot of football here tonight, but we still have 3.49 to go in the first quarter. Correct. <laughs> Tigers have the best punter in, in the SWAC, and he's on the punt right now. Corey Carter. Oh, he, he bobbled the ball a little. Carter keeps. Does he have enough speed to get there? And he first does. Down. It's a first down for the TSU Tigers. Corey so Carter you, had you the football. Yourself, was, that a, was that a set play or not? It's hard to tell because he did bobble the football. When you take a look at it again, you're going to see he had the snap, and it looked like he was going to kick it. But well, we just missed it right there. But yeah. it looked like he bobbled it and decided to, to run with it. Huh. Either way, they should put it in the playbook if it's not <laughs> because it worked. <laughs> Definitely. What a big play. He got that whole sideline all excited about that one. That's the break TSU needed. Give him five. <laughs> Great play. He doesn't get to do that very often, but he did a good job of turning that corner and getting upfield to get that first down. Bowen takes the snap, but another flag is down on the play. Might be a little delay of game. Looks like it. Cool. Delay of game. Okay. Five yards. Yeah, a little excited. First Clock down. is running. What a big play to keep that drive alive. So the Tigers are now going to be first and 15. They have a lot of young players on this team tonight, and we're going to see them come together because there's nothing like getting into the heat of battle. You go in there together, and all of a sudden you start to mesh a little bit. Mm -hmm. well, Bowen going to throw again, dumps it underneath, and Cross is hit hard immediately. As soon as he touched it, Marquise O'Leary was right there to knock him down. You see the little dump off, and boy, I tell you what, there were two or three Panthers. Oh, yes. Little shallow route. Bowen back to pass again, fires deep down the sideline, and he overthrows his man. That was Edwards. He was trying to hit him deep down the sideline, and it is incomplete. You know, I touched on Edwards earlier because he's the guy, he's a transfer from Tulane, and as we're going to take a look at the play, uh, he's a graduate student. He's already graduated, but he came to play, but apparently this guy can really stretch the field and be a threat. That's the guy they want to get the ball to, looks like it. He's going to get his chance, though, if they keep throwing it, up, throwing it down the field. The interesting thing about this TSU offense is you can expect to see eight different receivers play in a game today. Really? They're planning on using all eight of those guys. Hmm. And we have another flag down. Too much time again. Hmm. Third down. So they will go back and regroup again. We touched on it earlier. Uh, TSU actually have half their quarterback from last year returning, only he's playing defensive back this year. Wow. That's so that's a, a big, big switch. It's a big transition. Bowen looking to pass, but he has to scramble out of the pocket. He keeps. A flag goes down. He's going to be very close to the first some, down. Some sort of holding call. He's going to probably bring that back. So Looks like he was a yard short. Damon Jackson got him out of bounds over there. Out of bounds over there. Uh, he would have been a yard short of the first down, but we're going to have to check on the flag here and see what what the call. Holding. Number 81, offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. And that holding was on Billy Rosenberg, the senior tight end. He was called for the hole right there on the scramble. You can see Billy at the top of the screen. Mm. Mm. 
You better believe they'll be ready for the fake one now. <laughs> and we have another whistle on the field. And a lot, another timeout to discuss things. I don't think Prairie View, um, Prairie View had enough players on the field. That's the last timeout, isn't it? If that was Prairie View, yes. Yeah, so that's that's interesting because now we're still in the first quarter. You got 2:21 to go in the first quarter, and they have no timeouts left in the you know. Correct. That's pretty interesting. While we have a second, let me mention this. Don't miss the TSU Tigers volleyball team will be in action on September 15th. Go out and support the ladies. That's at 6.30 at the Health and PE Arena. Tickets are on sale now, so log in to TSUBall.com today. Corey Carter with the punt. Hits it right down the middle. It hits, and oh. it is into the end zone. A touchback, so the Panthers will get it and start first and 10. When you look at it so far, you, you get the sense that you, you can feel the rivalry, that this is pretty, it, it, it's very competitive out there. Any game is competitive, but when you have this type of rivalry, it's, it's really something else. The Panthers are going to get the ball, and as we said early in the game, we expected them to run and to continue to run. Courtney Brown. He missed all of last year. He had a knee injury, so, you know, just to get him back is something good. They also has Jonta Abair. We mentioned him, what he's done in his career. He went over 1,000 yards last year, so they're gonna, now might be a good time to lean on those guys. Those are the two veterans on the field, so I'm pretty sure I won't be surprised they don't hand him the ball right about now. First and 10 from the 20 for the Panthers. Huh? The play action. Trey Green under pressure. He is caught and spun down. Big hit right back there by Derek Lyles. Big number 94. Got off of the line really quick. Got back there and made his presence felt. That's the second time Derek Lyles made a big play. Good thing about that, though. He got some help from his buddy. They forced him out of the pocket right in the Lyles, and he spins him down. Big sack on Trey Green. You can kind of see that defense settling in a little bit. Correct. Panthers have a second and 17. They give it to A Bear. He goes around the left side, still on his feet before oh, he's knocked hit. out of bounds. Number 19, Raheem McMorris. <laughs> McMorris got him out of bounds with a little escort right there, but here we see, take another look. He's getting around that end that right there, and then finally he's escorted out of bounds. After a nice game for the Panthers. Green looking to throw the football again. Has a man near the sideline. It goes through his hands, and it is incomplete. So they will have to, I, I shouldn't say they will have to, Will Skinner on the coverage doing it. Uh, excuse me, uh, Joshua Holly. Pass is incomplete over there. Going to bring up a fourth down for the Panthers. And we will see Owen Houlihan again. That's a good three and out by TSU. They needed this. Yeah, you know, they stopped him deep down in their territory there. Malik Cross back to return for the Tigers. Good rugby style punt. Houlihan's kick is high. Cross calling for the fair catch. And he makes it cleanly right about the 46-yard line. So that is where TSU will start first and 10. But you're exactly right, John Henry. That was a really good stop because you had him backed up. The last thing you wanted to do was let him get a couple of first downs, move that ball out there, and back you up in your own territory. Instead, you have it near midfield. Now they got the momentum to come out. Hey, got 48 seconds left in the first quarter, but hey, 
It gives them transition to move on to the second quarter, make something happen. Offensively, the Tigers are going to go with Daryl Robinson at running back this time. I think that might be his first action of the night. I mentioned before they had three new backs this year, and he's one of them. Looks like they're going to use all of them tonight. First and ten, Bowen hands inside Woo! right there to Robinson. Tough running there. And he is stacked up. There's a reason why he's in there. He runs very, very hard. But that's what you like to see in your running back, isn't it? Yes, sir. Marquise O'Leary is in the crowd helping to send him back, but that's a nice game. A little off tackle run there, and you, you came away with seven yards just on good blocking and good effort. A little cut back action. Bowen operating under center this time. Back, short drop, dumps it off, has a man. Should have been a first down there. And it is complete. Looks like it's his big tight end, Billy Rosenberg. He hauls it in, and that'll be a first down for the Tigers. Jalen Coleman. That's going to take us to the second quarter. Going right there on the short drop, and he, you know, got the ball into Rosenberg's hands for the first down. A little quick hit. And that will be the end of the first quarter, and what a first quarter it was. It's a tight ball game, a defensive struggle so far with the Panthers leading the Tigers 7-0. Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. Welcome back, and thank you for tuning in tonight. We are watching the TSU Tigers take on the Prairie View Panthers in the Labor Day Classic, the 31st annual Labor Day Classic. And so far, we have a tough battle, a tough physical battle down on the field. Tigers have it first and 10. They start from their own 40-yard line. With double tight. Jonathan Bowen hands it off to Robinson. And he banged in there just like he did on first down and picked up three or four yards. James Paul Bryant there to make the stop for PV. You can see that uh, Texas Southern offense picking up more and more momentum as the game goes on. As you take a look, it does not take that guy long to hit the hole, does it? No, it doesn't. It's very, very quick. Darrell Robinson, another one of those community college transfers from Pearl River Community College. Bowen on the rollout left, throws it over, and he has his man, and it is complete. Looks like a flag that is down. Number 13 down there, that's uh, Larry Clark. He switched his number last year, he was 85. Jalen Thibodeau on the stop. And you're right, there's another flag on the play. Illegal formation, five men lined up in the backfield. Five yard penalty, replay, second down. 
a legal formation, so that will back the Tigers up a little bit. Larry Clark last season, this guy made some great acrobatic catches. I mean, he was he was really a fine receiver last year, so I know they're expecting some really big things from him this year. And apparently, he thinks that number 13 is lucky because he switched from 85 to 13. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> uh, most people would trade out at 13. <laughs> After the penalty, it's going to be second down and about 13 yards for TSU. Second down. Bowen looking to pass. Lots of room in front Lots of him, of so room. he pulls it down. Nice jets. He breaks the tackle, and Bowen is finally knocked out of bounds around the 23-yard line. Foster Brown, the second, is there to chase him out of bounds, but that was a great decision to keep the football. Definitely. As he breaks it, a lot of room, get out of bounds. Don't be a hero. We need you for the next play. And the best thing about that was he saw the opening, and he made the decision early, and he took off. And it's a big, big first down for the Tigers. Bowen looking to throw again. Dumps it underneath. Has Malik Cross. Nice move. Another nice move. Wow. And Cross dives down to about the 13-yard line before he's taken down by Marquise O'Leary. Good pass. Got it to him quickly. And we'll talk about quick feet. Yes. That was interesting. Preview a and number 75 getting down the field trying to make a play. That's a big boy there. He was hustling. Yes, sir. And he's a nose guard. <laughs> Second down and short. Bowen's going to keep right up the middle, and I think he picked it up. James Harper was there on the stop. Harper is the big guy you were talking about that was hustling on the play, and he comes back and makes another stop inside. He has a, he has a motor on it. It's a nice, steady drive. That's what you like to see. Bowen's going to throw it again. Fires, and it is incomplete. The pass almost intercepted. There was a DB right up there close to making a play. Marquise O'Leary also in the vicinity. We've called that guy's name out a lot. As you can see, Bowen passed it right there, and it was into a crowd. Really good play by number 80, Derek Griffin, getting in there to make sure nobody did intercept right. that pass. But he, you know, Griffin goes like 6'6". Six, six. Hmm. So yeah, I can tell you what they were trying to do. They were trying to get that ball up high and a let him go up ball. and get it. So that's not a bad idea at all. He can get up and go and get it. Jonathan Bowen throwing back to his left. And hmm. a fine defensive play right there by number nine, Kenneth Jordan. He smelled that one out, and he made a big play. Jordan there with a big hit. Well, he was right on Mark Edwards. You could see they had a couple of blockers out in front, so. We'll set the screen there for them. Trying to set that, that screen to make something happen there. If you look at the rushing for the first half, Trey Green, the quarterback, of course, he had that big run. But he has 90 yards on six carries, but he had that long touchdown run, the 80-yarder, uh, to his credit. Tigers are actually doing a really good job on Jonta Abair. He only has four carries and 32 yards. Really good job there. When you look at Jonathan Bowen making his first start for TSU, he's five out of seven, 35 yards. He had a long of 15 yards. So you can see the Tigers bringing him along get gradually. We talked on the, on the top how he transferred in from Cisco Community College, went to school at Cypress Lake. So, uh, we mentioned he probably has a lot of friends and family here supporting him tonight, and I'm sure they like what they, they're seeing right now. Correct. Tigers looking at a third and 14.
Bowen with a short drop, lobs it deep for the big fella, and it is out of passes out of the end zone. But they were trying to set it up for Derek Griffin. Griffin, I'm, I mentioned before, is 6'7", 230 pounds. Actually went to Terry High School here in town, so. Okay. Boy, he looks like a stud, doesn't he? Yes, he does. That's going to set up Eric Medina for a field goal attempt. He's going to try it from 32 yards. Snap is good. The hole is down. Medina's kick. Mm. And it is no good. It's wide left. He's got a flag down, though. He's got a flag down. But we do have a penalty flag down on the play. They may have. Holding. 44 offense. Mm. Five yard penalty. Replay fourth down. Daryl Robinson called for the hole on that play, the backup running back. Okay, now that's what I thought would happen. Penalty is declined because he missed the field goal, but he's, you don't want to replay. Uh, Give him a second chance at it. You don't want to kick a second chance at it. We're going to pause for a second chance in just a minute by going to break. Right now, PB still clinging to that 7 nothing lead over the TSU Tigers. 11.42 to go in the second quarter. Define the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. Welcome back to BBVA Compa Stadium. We're watching the TSU Tigers and the Prairie View Panthers PV with the football first and 10 from right at their own 20 yard line. Low snap on the play, but we have a flag down. That's Jonta Abair taking the handoff. He runs wide, had no place to go, cuts it back inside, and it ended up with like a five yard gain before he's knocked down by Jarius Moore. Jerry is more, of course, the senior from North Shore High School. Illegal formation, 70, 71 offense, five men in the backfield, five yard penalty, first down. And that will back the Panthers up five. five. Sean Pierce was the guy who moved for PV, PV on the play. This is the part of the ball game where field position can become so important for it's you. Definitely. They're going to start first and 15. The ball is at their 15. They hand it to Jonta Abear oh. has nowhere to go. He is knocked down quickly. Number 52, Darius Stapleton. He couldn't. He got back there in a hurry. Yes, he did. Arthel Rye also in the act. He got there first. Tigers getting very aggressive on defense. Six. 
Trey Green dumps it off in a hurry. He has Bear. Another flag is down, though. Bear is knocked out of bounds on the side by Homer Causey. And the interesting thing about Homer Causey was he was the starting quarterback for TSU last season. Now he's playing def defensive back and making his mark on defense. But let's check out that flag. Personal foul. The illegal hands to the face. Number 42 on the defense. 15 yards will be added to the end of the line. First down. That's Arthel Rye. Uh, I thought he, he said that was either 44 or 42. I thought he said 42, so that was Arthur L. Rye if mm -hmm. it was number 42. Okay. Um, so that hurts. That's going to be a PV first down, and the Panthers are going to take over at about the 32-yard line. As expected, we have a really nice crowd on hand tonight for this one, but the, the, the crowd is always big for PV versus TSU. Green fires near the sideline, and it is incomplete. DeMarco Lestraps is over there, right there, trying to make the catch, but he could not get back to the football. He was working his way back, just could not get all the way back. Demetrius Johnson over there on the coverage. Kind of think he was just throwing that one away. I think so, too. Trey Green fakes the handoff. Takes a look downfield and passes tipped up in the air by Courtney Brown. And that's a very dangerous play. Demetrius Johnson was close to that. You can see somebody coming up with an interception on a play like that. Special tip drill there. Hey, he almost came away with a nice pick. Number 21 is Demetrius Johnson doing a good job on the coverage for TSU. Panthers looking at a third and ten. Green scrambles out of the pocket, throws near the sidelines, and it's another drop Rob. pass. Had a man out there, that was number 83, Cameron Smith, the H-back. Right, that's their, that's their leading blocker there. He probably wasn't going to get the first down anyway, but you, you really want, like to see receivers catch the ball when, they, when you're that wide open. It's the first game of the season. You're going you're gonna to have some miscues like that right now. Panthers will have to punt it away again, and we will see Owen Houlihan in. Malik Cross set to return. Houlihan gets it high and short, and it bounces the T to a TSU way, mm -hmm. but it is down right there by number 22. Jalon Coleman. Good stop by T TSU. They, they needed that break there. Well, you can really see both teams settling in to this defensive struggle that we have going on here. But the, the Tigers have been moving the ball pretty well the last couple of times. Just had a couple of miscues down there in the red zone. If they can capitalize on those, those miscues, hey, it can be a tied-up ball game right about now. Be a great situation here to put together a drive and make a stop and go into the locker room with a 7-7 ball game and you get the football in the second half. Yes, sir. Oh, Bowen throws it over the middle. That's not Bowen's fault, though. Brandon Medina with the interception for Prairie View. That is not Bowen's fault. He has to catch that ball. Bowen puts it right, right in his hands. That's Mark Edwards. Mark has to catch that ball. That's his. Big play by PV on the play. Number 44, Brandon Medina. 
That's probably the easiest interception he'll get all year because it was tipped up and it just fell right into his hands. A little bread basket catch. So that's a big break right there for the Panthers. Unfortunate for TSU because, like you said, Bowen did have that one right on the money. So the Panthers will start first and 10 from the 40-yard line. I've noticed Abraham hasn't been in the game the last two series. Trey Green wanted to crank it deep, but he had to pull it down, and he's being chased down from behind. Good play. Number 46, Sekiru Asafatu, putting the pressure on for TSU. Man, that guy was cranking up the mortar. Check him out. <laughs> A little dance to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that speed, that closing <laughs> speed. Great play. Yes, he did. Sekiru Asafatu. Nice play. He still picked up a yard, but what a good hustle. We, we're seeing a lot of guys out there just letting it all hang out tonight. Like, like you said, it's a defensive struggle right about now. Trey Green gives to Courtney Brown, slips the tackle. Courtney Brown around the left side. Courtney Brown down the sidelines, and he is finally knocked out near the 10-yard line. That's Archie Rice. Archie Rice jumping on for the ride, but Courtney Brown slipped through there hole in a hurry. It looks like it's just a regular zone right. He just cut it all the way back. He cut it back, and, 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 and again, it's that pursuit. You know, it, it, it's hardly ever hurt you to be to hustle so much, but these guys are cutting it so far back. As a linebacker, you just cannot overshoot the ball. You got to make sure you keep that ball in front of you. A little struggle going on down there. Arthur Rye with the stop. But the officials got things under control. Going to be a second down for the Panthers at about the nine. Green fakes it and keeps it. He goes around the left side. Oh. The crackback block right oh, there. Number one, Claiborne. On Claiborne, it was number 88, Nick Petrie. Cracking back on Claiborne and... Uh, Mr. Petrie, you're going to pay for that at some point. Oh, yes. <laughs> He's cracking back down. Ooh. Wow. Short gain on the play. With these new rules now, you wonder if that's illegal or not. Okay, big third down coming up here for the Panthers and for that TSU defense. 7.38 to go until halftime. Green fires a big hit and then he wrapped him up. Demetrius Johnson is there. Home Mikazi is there. Keelan LaSalle is there. Keelan LaSalle makes the catch. And then look at Home Mikazi. That guy was a quarterback last year. That is amazing. Check that out. Talk about the amazing talent that this kid has. <laughs> talent and the heart to, to want to get out there and yeah, stick to make, somebody. To make that transition. Coach Asbury told me, he said, you know, he. He has that kind of mentality. He don't the pass is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Third down. Third down. So they're going to pick up the flag. Okay. I think the heat is getting to these officials a little bit. <laughs> you can see in perspiration Ooh. out there. You gotta like that Homer Kazi, you know. You you spent all last year as a quarterback. They ask you to go play defensive back. You say, "Sure, great. Where, where do I line up?" Right. And then you get in the game and you come in and make a big stop like it's that. Such a selfless player. Great play. So we got Owen Houlihan in for the field goal attempt. Looks like it's going to be a 22-yarder as he lines it up. Houlihan kicks it up and it is good. Good right through there so the PV Panthers go ahead they take a 10 nothing lead at this point in the second quarter 7 14 to go we will be back with more of the Labor Day Classic in just a minute define the fabric of a team it's not selfish it's not boastful, it's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together.
take a look at the scoring drive from earlier for PB. Six plays, 35 yards, and then only two minutes and 30 seconds. Big hit right there by Homer Kazi, and then the field goal right there by Houlihan. And that is where we are right now. It is a 10-0 game, PV. The kickoff goes, and it's going to be Austin Watts on the return, and he is hit hard and bounced out of bounds. And that is where the Tigers will take over the football. The Tigers need to get some momentum here right before half. Well, and they need, they need to be right. They need to come up and mix to get something going right here. PV got a really good break on that interception. It put them in scoring position, and, and they took advantage. Sure, now it's going to be TSU's turn. Exactly. That's a good stop on the defense just to get this only allowing three points. So Jonathan Bowen brings out his offense. They're going to start first and 10 from the 30 yard line. Bowen hands to Robinson. He goes off tackle before he is spun down after about three or four yards. Brandon Medina came up quickly to make that hit. Take a little look at Robinson. I mean, he takes that one step and then he cuts right into the hole. Robinson is another one of those uh, community college transfers, went to Pearl River Community College. Bowen back to pass, lofts one down the sideline and a little contact between Foss and number nine. That was Kenneth Jordan. But no flag on the play. <laughs> Going to bring up a big third and five. Bowen from the gun, sets his feet, throws, has a man cross with a couple of nice moves. Still on his feet, spinning with a big first down for the TSU Tigers. It's nice. He's got some good feet. Meshach Williamson. He showed us a little bit of that early, but that you're right, he does have very quick feet. See, right there, caught the ball. He knew he was coming back. A lot of receivers would have just stepped out of bounds. Exactly. For him to stop on a dime like that, this kid is very athletic. You'll break your ankles if he's playing yes. basketball. <laughs> <laughs> First down for the Tigers. They're Bowen they're, again. They're going to him again. To cross again, and he's thrown out of bounds after a five-yard gain. Foster Brown there for the stop. You kind of feel that rhythm, can't mm -hmm. you? They see something here. Bowen hits another short pass. He has Griffin. And the big receiver is finally pulled down. Derek Griffin again is pulled down after he passed Meshack Williamson on the hit. But you can see he's hard to take down. Oh, he? yes. Got Prairie and him on their heels right now. They look like they're a little gas. Offensive coordinator John Shannon. Mixing it up pretty good. Went to McLeod, Malik Cross, comes back, goes to Griffin. Now there's movement up front. I don't know. That's kind of a hard call, though, when those defensive players move into the neutral zone. I mean, you got to give us some leeway there. If they move into the neutral zone, it should be called on defense. It is. Jimmy Williams making the movement right there for TSU. And uh, you're right, that's kind of like a, a judgment call for the official. He's got to tell what movement caused what. And uh, he thought Jimmy moved. So here we go. We're back. It's going to make it first and 15 
for the Tigers. Bowen sets his feet, finds Cross again. Cross turns on the Jets, and it's a nice gain. He got a chunk of that penalty yardage back. Definitely. Looks like Cross is the guy they're going to go to. They're going to lean on him a little bit here. Well, he, you know, he's a senior, and they expect some big things from him. Of course, the senior from Maryland, he played a big role last year. Jalen Coleman was the guy coming up there with the stop on Cross. Really like the feel of this drive, though. Mm -hmm. They're doing a lot of different things. It's like they're they're finding the open spots and they're exploiting them. Bowen again, looking to throw, but pulls it up and he gets down. That's a nice move. Well, definitely, he's a smart quarterback. Very, very smart quarterback. Take what you can get and then protect yourself and get down. You live to to play another play. Yeah, that's, that's what they always say. Next play. Again, he made that quick decision though. He saw where the opening was. Pulled it down, said, I'm going to take what I can get, and that's enough. Now we're looking at third and two for the Tigers to keep this thing going. 3.44 to go in the second quarter. Looks like Prairie View AM is coming off the edge here. A little blitz. And Bowen rolling away from the blitz. Keeps and he's going to be very close to that first down. Mm. Number 13 there was wide open. I'm surprised he didn't just dump it to him. 13 is Larry Clark. Mm -hmm. Bowen, I, I think he picked it up though. He he just had to get around the corner there. Let's take another look. He ran away from that blitz you were talking about. Mm -hmm. He was looking downfield and then well, they, they marked him short. Hmm. Interesting. Well, double tight underneath the center. Quarterback sneak here, I see. Fourth down for, for the sure. Tigers, and you called it John Henry, the quarterback sneak to Jonathan Bowen. He picked it up oh, easily. Man. First down, TSU Tigers. Oh, Good call, the double tight there, and you want to run that play quick. When you oh, run yeah, it. Definitely. It's a no brainer when you only have just a nose there, there in the A gap there, and you got. Three big horses that you can run behind. First and ten ball looks like it's at the 11 yard line. So there is room to get another first down. Somewhere near the goal line there around the one. Bowen under pressure. Tried to spin away and then he is yanked down. Mm. By number 10. Well, that is Akeem Barton. Well, a gap blitz. That's where that center, uh, their starting center comes in hand. He's not in that in the game right now. Man, I mean, he came right across his face. Barton came in and got his hands on the quarterback, and not too much Bowen could do with that. Wow. So he goes down. That'll bring up second down. So a lot of pressure coming from that PV defense. Now you're looking at second and about 20. Good protection for Bowen. Fires into the end zone and it is incomplete. He was trying to hit Edwards down there. Marquise O'Leary on the defense. Edwards is the guy that they're trying to get down the sidelines a lot. Pass might have been a little strong. But he took a shot. Safety came over, got there in time to make to help out on the play. Bowen again. Good protection over the middle, and he's a little too high. He had cross coming over the middle. Had a shot at it, but it passes a little too high right there. Uh, it would have had to be perfect, though. Marquise O'Leary again. This guy is all over the field tonight for PV. So on comes Chris Medina. He's going to give this one a shot. It looks like it's going to be a 37 yard field goal attempt. It's 
snap. Down and Medina's kick. It's good. And he nailed that one. Good. Got a lot of leg into that one. We're going to pause for a timeout here after that field goal by Chris Medina with the PV Panthers leading the TSU Tigers 10 to 3. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Ms. Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally re Hello, I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. Ellen is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. Think, question, cut, compare, learn something new, debunk something old, hit a wall, and think again. Model. Plan. Spin. Discard. Now breathe. And keep going. Work till it's late. Then early. Then late again. Smile. Laugh. Rest. Regroup. Use technology. Use your hands. Use everything you've got. That's what it takes. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens but it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration to be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Welcome back to BVVA Compass Stadium. Take a look at your scoring drive. 13 plays, 49 yards, 520. Culminating with a Chris Medina field goal for the Tigers right there. We got ourselves a 10-3 ball game. And the kickoff goes out of bounds, so that's going to be a penalty against uh, TSU. Start first and 10 from the 35, and this would be a really good time if you're a TSU fan to get three and out on defense and get that football back and try to get something else in there before halftime. They get a big stop right here. Call a timeout to get a little time back and take it out and score. Trey Green with a short pass. It's going to be incomplete. Darius Moore was right there on the coverage. Excellent coverage by the former North Shore star. That's what you want right there. Throw three incomplete passes. You get yeah. the ball back in less than 10 seconds. Yeah, you got to kind of wonder about that because <laughs> <laughs> you want that clock to be moving. Second down and 10. Trey Green fakes the handoff, tosses it near the sideline, has a man, cuts inside for a short gain. Not much there going at all. The stop by Raheem McMorris coming up quickly to make the stop. That was number 85 making a reception. Keelan LaSalle taking the catch for Prairie, Prairie View. Oh, and yeah. the pass over the middle from Trey Green was incomplete. Well, it's fourth down there. I mean, like, so I would have called a timeout there at third down right there because we got to stop right there. But they just did it for us real quick, you know, incomplete pass. 
So you have two incompletions and one pass that was completed, uh, but it was as good as a run because it was a right. short pass. But now the Tigers have 113 to work with, and that, that should be time enough to get a score. Yes, sir. That's an interesting combination of plays by Perry Man in. Houlihan back to punt again with Malik Cross waiting to receive for the Tigers. Boy, that was a great kick. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, he has to he, feel that. He really got his foot in on that one yes, because uh, his last couple have been short. And Cross moved up just a little bit, and he sailed that one right over his head. Yeah, he's been rugby styling before, so he just sat, set his feet there and just regular punt. It's a good kick. 102 to go left in the half. It's enough time. Two minute offense. We'll see how they approach this because this is an interesting situation. You have the ball deep in your own territory. You want to be careful too. Either run the ball twice here. You got the momentum coming out of the halftime. You get the ball back. Or take two couple shots down the field. Bowen under center makes a fake. He's looking down the field. They're trying to get a lot more than that. Yeah. But Edwards is double covered down the sidelines, and he just threw it away. Oh, those safeties are at least 25 yards back away from the, from the line of scrimmage. So that's what they're expecting. Tigers have it second and 10 here in the second quarter. Bowen under center this time. Hands it off to Rashad Burney, and he is stopped near the line of scrimmage. A short gain there, but Prairie View doesn't have any timeouts because they've already used all their timeouts. So. Correct. Pretty sure they'll probably run one more play and let that clock run all the way down. Damon Jackson getting in there for the tackle for the Panthers. Yeah, they're watching the clock right now. Good move. Mm -hmm. I think in the second half, we're going to see a lot more from Bowen. Sometimes it takes a while to get really comfortable. 13 seconds to go. He takes the knee. That's going to do it for the first half. What are some of your impressions of Mr. Bowen making his first start? I mean, as far as the jitters, I mean, I think he's played very well. I mean, we still need, they still need to control the ball by, with the run. But um, he's made some, some, some quality passes and brought him down there. Got him inside the red zone and just need to um, finish. Yeah, he looks like he's been very consistent, and he's done a really good job taking care of the football. That one interception, that was not his fault. It no. hit the receiver in the hands, and he couldn't hang on to it. So um, for the first half, I think they're going to be pretty pleased with him. And, you know, that can only help your confidence grow. Like, and like you said, this is the first game. Third and nine, so they stopped it with 10 seconds to go, so there'll be at least, one, at more least one more play. You can see there's a safety way back here near the 50 yard line, so the Panthers aren't taking any chances with this. <laughs> Bowen takes a knee, and we will get to the half this time. Clock's not running. And now the, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Officials said, hey, guys, you forgot something there. <laughs> so we had a defensive struggle in the first half. Really tough, hard-nosed football game. And the Panthers are leading 10-3. to three. But it could just as easily be a 7-3 game because the three points they got off the interception. Uh, so it's really, really a, a, a physical first half, the kind of first half you expect in this series. That's correct. 
but t but they had they had the momentum. They have the momentum coming out of the, the halftime, so they get the ball. So I think they're going to make some halftime adjustments and come out on fire. Okay, you see the TSU Tigers heading to the locker room to make some of those adjustments. At the half, it's the Prairie View Panthers leading the TSU Tigers 10-3. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about men. It's owned together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. of the 31st annual Labor Day Classic. We are, you know, this is a very competitive series between Texas Southern and Prairie View A&M, but that competitive spirit is not only on the football field, it also extends to the band. So we're gonna take a time out now and listen to some great music from the Prairie View A&M Marching Band.
French's chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchies. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. When we send an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect him to be professional. I expect him to be on time. Uh, I expect him to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. That is a beautiful shot of downtown Houston all lit up and we have a pretty good ball game going on here at BBVA Compass Stadium. I'm Butch Alcindor. He's John Henry Mills. Now last year in the series between PV and Texas Southern, we had a shootout. This year we have a good old fashioned slugfest because it's been a defensive battle in the first half. Definitely, Butch. I mean, hey, if they, if they, if they don't get things started here, hey, it's, 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 it's going to be a low scoring game. It is and you've been seeing a lot of rushing attack, of course. Prairie View is over 100 yards, but their quarterback has an 80-yard run, so that's kind of deceiving there. Let's roll the tape now and take a look at some of the highlights for the first half. Prairie View is leading Texas Southern 10-3 in this one, and the Panthers got to off to an early start. That is Jata Bear on the carry for a nice gain, and then here's the big play off the zone read. Look at that quarterback, go. I mean, he showed his speed and his talent right there. That kid there, he, he, he's going to be all right this year. Trey Green breaks it 80 yards for the touchdown. That would be the first score of the ball game, putting PV out in front. And then they come right back to that running game. This time it's Fred Anderson. Big tough running by Fred Anderson. Not no quitting there at all. Tough okay. to get out of bounds, but you saw uh, Dondre Dobbins taking him out. And then this is a nice play here. It goes to Rayshon Givens. He was their big target in the first half. But then the Tigers got a big break. The fumble on the play. That's what the Tigers needed right there to get them on the board. Hey, the only thing is, though, they came up a little bit short towards the end. But, hey, that quarterback there, once he gets a chance in the second half to throw in the toss, they're going to be all right. Joshua Brooks on the fumble recovery. And then Jonathan Bowen at quarterback scrambling around, and he is sacked. He is taken down right there by Jalen Coleman. So TS, I mean, PV had some timely blitzes in the first half where they came up with some big plays, but Bowen came right back. Yeah, he brought him right back down the field there and gave him a chance. Hey, and look at there, a special teams play, a little fake punt. That brought them right back in to come away with a couple points there in the second half. That was the play first of the first half. half. Corey Carter, a great punter, deciding to keep. He runs for the first down, and there you go. Bowen with a great pass to cross and check out the moves. Hey, Tossin, hey, that kid there, he got some quick feet. He's going to go to guy, I promise you, in the second half. That's Edwards. the guy they're going to be looking for. Edwards with another catch with his hands, a smooth catch. And then here's the last play here, a sack by Texas Southern's Darius Stapleton as that Tiger defense was fantastic in the first half. They really were. If you, if you look at it, the Tigers really came out strong on defense. You know, they got the 80-yard run, but then they settled down and shut everything down. And they did. I mean, that's exactly what they need. They kept their composure, and, and now when they come out, they get the ball back. They're going to be able to make some plays here in the second half. You know, we saw the offense start to come around also as we get a chance to take a look at some stats. But actually, we're going to go ahead to the break, and we're going to be back in just a few minutes with all the action of the second half with Prairie View leading Texas Southern 10-3. to this is where crisp smooth refreshing bud light happens 
but it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration to be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. Alan is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. Welcome back to BBVA Compass Stadium where we just finished our hard-hitting first half of football with the Prairie View Panthers leading the TSU Tigers 10-3, but we have the Panthers getting set to kick off to the Tigers to start the second half. Owen Houlihan will get the game with the, on the way for the second half. And, you know, very interesting first half there because it was almost like two prize fighters kind of feeling each other out. Houlihan's kick is deep. And Austin is stopped at about the 12 yard line. Austin Watts on the return for TSU and he is knocked down right there. So that is where the Tigers will start. Jalen Coleman. 22 yard line. 22 yard line. Jalen, Jalen Coleman is there for the hit. So you come out the second half. If you coach Asbury, what'd you tell your team at halftime? I tell you, keep your composure here. Um, hey, so we got a we got a long ball game here. We're still in this thing. All we need to do is take it down and score, and we, and we can we can win this ball game. First and ten for the Tigers from the 22. Bowen under center, hands it off, and is nowhere to go. That's Rashad Bernie, and he is stacked up by Jalen Coleman. Taking a look at some of the halftime stats, you can see PV is leading in total yards, 204 to 141. Rushing yards, that's the big discrepancy in the first half, 161 to 52, but if you throw out that 80 yard run, you got a pretty even ball game. Definitely. Tigers on second down, Bowen's pass complete to Edwards. And he hangs on, makes the catch before he's pushed out of bounds by number 20, Dominique Weaver. You know, the one drive they had a, a lot of success with, the two drives in the first half, they mixed it up with a lot of those little short passes. Correct. This is, it's just like a short pass. It's just like a, like a toss or a running place for, for the most part. Bowen, short drop, has to scramble out of the pocket, looks over the middle, has his man. That's Billy Rosenberg, the big tight end, and he fights his way for the first down. Good first down for them. They needed that. Jalen Coleman coming in on the stop, but it was a good move by Bowen, the young quarterback, finding some time, keeping his eyes over the middle, and finding his guy wide open.
Bowen hands off. Look, looks like number 22 is hurt for Prairie View A&M right now, linebacker. He's going out. He can't put any pressure on that right leg. He's going to have to hop off. That's number 24, Daryl Robinson, on the carry. For a five-yard gain for the TSU Tigers, he was knocked down by James Paul Bryant. Good gain on first down. Makes life a lot easier when you come up second and five, second and four. Bowen short drop again, looks left, then looks right, and then he's pulled down in the backfield. A lot of pressure there, and he's taken down by Davon Reed, among others. Number 10 also there, Akeem Barton, as they got the pressure on him. That time when you're taking that short drop like that, you're not going to have a whole lot of time. You know, if that, that hitch is either there where you want to pop it or it's not there. So, going to bring up a big third down now. He had three wides to the left, and then he motions uh, two men over to the right, so the wide receivers shift right. Bowen goes to the shotgun, back to pass. Throws it up and over their intended receiver. A nice play over there by number 24. He's trying to hit Austin Watts. But number 24 is the defensive back, Foster Brown, on the coverage. And that play had no chance. No chance at all. Panthers had, had already kind of smelled that one out. So the Tigers are going to have to turn it back over to the defense and let them go back to work. Corey Carter on the punt. He hits it hard. Good punt. Dominic Weaver back. He hauls it in inside the five and scrambles his way back to the six. That's a dangerous play for That's him to feel that punt play. inside the five. And once it goes past 10 yards, you're supposed to let that punt go into the end zone. Eric Williams I'm down sure there in a hurry to make the tackle. I'm pretty sure his coach will talk to him about that. What he to do on that. Really good punt by Carter. And then look at the fine play right there by Williams. Number 20, Clyde Lee. First, first one in number 39 on the, on the, on the finish up tap. Eric Williams cleaned it up. Number 20 got down there first. That was Clyde Lee. So now the PV Panthers will start first and 10 from their own seven yard line. Tigers defense is going to be trying to pick up right where they left off. Trey Green at quarterback for the Panthers. He hands it off. Jonta is caught. A bear caught inside the five and thrown down. Great pursuit by ten, the Texas. Jarius Moore, the senior from North Shore High School. Number 33 was there. Number 27 was there. Look at Jarius Moore. Jamal Lucas on to finish him off. Tigers were they? They, they were all over that. Play. They're swarming to the ball. They're excited. Trey Green's now going to have to operate out of his end zone. Green fakes the handoff, fires the pass, and it is incomplete. Number four, Homer Causey in the vicinity on the coverage. See it again. He made the fake handoff, and that, that again, that one had no chance either. The Tigers had that one defense well. Yeah, they're trying to get it out to their, their main receiver, Rayshon Givens, again. But it was the pressure that really caused that pass to be thrown low and, yes, and incomplete like that. I wouldn't be surprised to see that TSU defense really come after him here. Trey Green has a little time, fires over the middle, and he has a man. And he's finally pulled down from behind. 87, DeMarco Lestraps. With a fine catch. Big play on third down. He hung in the pocket there and threw a strike. That's pretty impressive by him also. Knowing that you're going to get hit on the point of contact. To still stay with that ball. Jamal Lucas eventually dragged him down. First down for PV and the pass is uh, too tall. 
He was trying to hit Rayshon Givens, number 80. going to be second down that that play hurt a little bit because they were playing so hard on defense they were getting so much done and then you give up the big first down yeah. and now you got to start over and look for the turnover here. Jonta a bear on the carry but he is trapped in the backfield and he is taken down. It's Damon like King one of the Tigers there. <laughs> So now PV is faced with another third down. And the whistle blows. And the TSU Tigers call timeout, so we have a timeout on the field. You know, we talked before, just we just barely touched on it earlier in the game about all the coaching changes because we have Coach Willie Simmons making his first appearance as a head coach on the TSU side. We got Heisman Northern, who's the defensive coordinator for the Tigers. You know, you got your old teammate yeah. also on the PV side. That is true. Bubba McDowell's over there. He's a coach at um, safeties and he's assistant head coach. So uh, he's got a little promotion there. Yeah, and Bubba McDowell has a history with TSU too. So that's what we were talking about earlier when you talk about family. You know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of connections. And, uh, you know, that's what it, I know you didn't get to go earlier this week, but there, it's a big week because they have two press conferences. And, and one, you get to talk about the X's and O's, and the other one, you kind of get to to be family. Right, get to know the players and, and basically a little homecoming, get to greet, greet, greet everybody again. Oh, it, you know, this year it, it turned into a Comedy Central roast. Here. It, was, <laughs> it was pretty good this week. It was, it was really good. PV back on the field now. They're looking at a third and about 12. Trey Green from the gun. Under pressure, has to sprint out of the pocket, still looking downfield, finds a man underneath, and he's got some room to run. A big play all the way down. That's number 84, Andrew Michael. Coming up with a big play, and he showed some speed, but there is a flag on the play. Darian Claiborne chased him down. But this is going to be an important call. Welcome to the pass. Number 33, defense. Mm. 15 yards added to the end of the game. Correction. Pack the distance to the end of the run. First down. That's going to end up being a huge play for the Panthers. If we take again, that was Green just creating something on his own. Correct. The defense have been there, um, took an inside um, rush move. You know he has to stay out contained because that's the kind of quarterback you do not want on the outside. Green came back with the pass to number 84. That was Andrew Michael. 5'8", 160 pounder from Beaumont, Texas. And the little guy can really scoot. Green again, looking to pass again. Underneath, he has number 88 who's fighting his way close to the goal line. That's Nick Petrie. He does a good job muscling his way down there. Homer Causey on the tackle for the TSU Tigers. Just a quick little hitch, and he got what he could get on that play. Correct. Panthers on the three. Handoff to Abair. He stopped. He is hit by Darius Moore. Great he stop. met him right in Great the stop. hole Great and stop. just drove him down to the ground. You know, last year when Claiborne went out, it was Darius Moore who really stepped up and really made some big plays for the TSU Tigers. And you could see him, you know, getting right back into form tonight. Third down. The keeper, he's up and in for the touchdown is Green. He faked the handoff, followed the tailback right up the middle and dove in for the PV touchdown. You take another look, the fake, and then it was just 
straight ahead and he dives in for the Prairie View touchdown. And the extra point by Houlihan is good. And the PV Panthers have upped their lead over TSU. Right now it's the Panthers clinging to a 17-3 lead over the Tigers. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work. Together. Welcome back to BVVA Compass Stadium, Tigers and Panthers. We're taking a look at a scoring drive from Prairie View A&M. Nine plays, 93 yards, and two minutes and 50 seconds before Trey Green went over the top for the touchdown. So PV will get set to kick it off after the score. 17-3 ball game, Panthers in front. Brad Woodard back. Number 26 to receive, and Austin Watts. Both of them back, ready to get their hands on the football, and uh, the TSU offense ready to go to work again. It's going to be Brad Woodard near the goal line. Starts up the middle, has a seam. Woodard gets around the outside. One man to beat. That was the kicker, Houlihan, and he managed to push him out of bounds. But... Uh, that might get the sideline fired up there. Yeah, that's what they need, a little spark there to bring them, bring them back to life just a little bit. But it's a long game. It's only the beginning of the third quarter. TSU got a lot of time. Brad Woodard using his speed to get around the outside and finally knocked out of bounds, giving the Tigers some great field position. Bowen looking around, can't find a receiver, scrambles out to his left and just throws it away. That was probably a smart decision. Carpenter in the vicinity, but he just threw it high and over his head. Looks like, looks like they're back in a two-type formation. Yeah, he, you know, he's operated a lot uh, more than I thought they would under center. And there he is again. Handing off. Has a hole. Great run. Quick hitter right there by number 26, Brad Woodard. So he makes the big kickoff return. And then Woodard again, just great blocking up front. And they open that hole for him. Nick Brewer on the stop. It's 
So Brad Woodard showing that he can, can play on this level. And off to Woodard again, slips the tackle, has a hole still on his feet, and he's finally written down. Wow, if he doesn't grab by that jersey, that's six points there, I believe. Two-string tackle. You can see Woodard going around, and he, he did a fine job there. Meshack Williamson was the guy who grabbed the jersey and, <laughs> and may have saved the score. Bowen is hit as he threw it, and it's intercepted. It's that same blitz that they did before. That inside rush on the B-gap right there on that tackle. Is that number two? Is that John Paul Bryant, I think, is the guy who made the interception. He was hit as he released. Watch it right there, just as he released the football. He was trying to get it to Griffin. And he's hit right there, and it's going to be intercepted. That's one you may, if you want to look back at it, you may want to just eat that one and, and go down. But he's going to learn. This is his first start. So the Panthers are going to get the football right back. First and ten. Green hands off to Courtney Brown. And Courtney Brown picks up nine yards. You know, do you know what time it is, John Henry? No. <laughs> it is time for the A Rocket Movers presents Do You Know TSU? Tonight's question is, when was the first Labor Day Classic held? Was it 1975, 1985, or 1995? Do you know the answer? No, I do not know the answer. Well, I'll give you some time to think about it. We'll be right back. We'll check in later in the ball game. Handoff goes to Courtney Brown again. He has a little hole. He gets through the line, and Courtney Brown rips off a big run for the Panthers. Looks like they're going at the hurry up offense. Yes, he's get set. Courtney Brown, six foot and 215 pounds, so he carries a little load too. Yes, he does. He's also a redshirt senior. Green passes out into the flat. Has Jonte Abair. He picks up about seven or eight yards. Jonte Abair. Raheem McMorris making the stop for the Tigers. Inside, and that's Courtney Brown again. And I mentioned, you know, he missed. All of last year with a knee injury. But the year before, in 2013, he ran for over a thousand yards. So this guy can get up and go. Fred Anderson, number 28, in the backfield now. Low snap. Green passes out to his man in the flat. That was a bear, and he cannot hang on, and it's incomplete. That play right there, that set up the for this up the read option, where he has a chance to either run the ball or throw it. But it depends on what that defender does outside that outside linebacker does. Panthers are looking at second down here, and ten yards to go. They can still get a first down near the goal line. Looks like. Green hands it off to Abear coming around the right side. Abear is in for the touchdown, but there is a flag down. And it could be coming back because, again, it was somebody closing the edge. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure they're discussing if he. There's no foul on the play. And I saw that. He was discussing if that if the holding would have affected the play at all. So I'm thinking the holding was such at a, at a certain angle it would have not wouldn't have matter if they would have been able to get to the play play the, the running back or not. So it's going to be a touchdown for the Prairie View Panthers. Jonte Abear taking it right around the right side and he's in for the touchdown. 
And with 6-11 to go in the third quarter. The Panthers go for the extra point. Houlihan's kick is up and good. And right now, the Prairie View Panthers are in the driver's seat in this one. It is 24-3 over at BVVA Compass Stadium as Coach Darrell Asbury and his troops will try to get something going on the sideline. We have a lot of football left to play. When we say an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect him to be professional. I expect him to be on time. Uh, I expect him to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchie's. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. We are back at BBVA Compass Stadium. You just saw the big interception. Then is Courtney Brown, senior from Lake Charles, ripping off a big run. Prairie View had a little rhythm going right there. Six plays, 54 yards, and one minute and 34 seconds before Jonte Hebert runs it in for the touchdown. So the Panthers are using that running game to great success. The kick goes deep into the end zone and it's number 29. Matthew Butler bringing it out. And that was a big hit. It was a big hit. Nick Brewer on the stop. Butler chases it down in the end zone, tries to take it back and watch the stick. Kind of stuttered there. He kind of slipped on the play. He was trying to make a right. move. And then... Okay, see if, T if the TSU Tigers can get that offense cranked up here. Bowen with a handoff, and it's a nice game of about four yards right up the middle. A little run by Brad Woodard again. Brad Woodard. James Paul Bryant is there for the stop. Brad Woodard getting the touches now, though. I think TSU found something in this game. Second down and about five to go. Bowen looking to throw, has some time out toward the sideline. And his guy, Larry Clark, is double covered on the play. The pass sails out of bounds. It's incomplete. Marquise O'Leary, the closest defender to the ball, but that one was pretty high. The Tigers are looking at a third and about five. And, you know, you still got five minutes to go in the third and the entire fourth quarter. So this game is still very much in reach. 
if, uh, if they can settle down and get something going here. Bowen with a short drop. Couldn't find the guy. Nice move there, though. How about that move from a quarterback? Definitely. Play breaks down. And keep the ball in his hands. He made something happen because they had a spy right in front of him. Right here. Good job. That'll move the sticks and set the Tigers up with first and ten. Bowen back under center again. Three receivers to the left. Movement on the defensive line, but this is Woodard breaking a tackle and falling forward for a nice game. Stephen Guillory just tripped him up there. from the gun this time under pressure has his man complete that's going to be a first down to Malik Cross and sometimes you just need to get a couple of first downs to get your confidence going just a simple out in the Joshua Holly up there in a hurry to make the stop and there's your <laughs> the big guy that likes to hustle number 75 James Harper oh man for a defensive lineman, he's active. He has a motor on him. That's the kind of kid you want on he, your team. He is very active. Blitz. They picked it up, though. He chunks it deep, and oh, oh it's just out of, out of bounds. bounds. Good block in there, though. You're right. He came with that blitz and uh, picked up up front. Let's see who got the... Great pickup by Woodard again. Just, just a tad bit outside. Woodard's really come in and made an impact in this game. like to have Matthew Butler in the backfield now. Yes, it is. They said they were going to play a lot of people, and we're seeing a lot of different guys get their opportunities tonight. Bowen looking for the screen pass, has his man, but no room over there. That was Matthew Butler. You mentioned he had just gotten into the backfield and just had no chance on that one. So the Tigers are looking at a third and ten. Big down here. Bowen with two wide receivers to the right and two to the left. Operating out of the gun. Has time. Fires a strike and it's out of bounds. Incomplete. He's trying to hit Griffin over there. Derek Griffin, the big 6'7 receiver, and the timing was just a little off. So now we're going to see Corey Carter come onto the field for TSU. Oh, that was the senior tight end arriving a little late. Correct. Billy Rosenberg. Didn't see a flag, so no harm, no foul. Now, I'm not going to ask you what time it is again, because you know what time it is now. It's time to check back in on our A Rocket Movers. Do you know TSU? When was the first Labor Day Classic? And the question was, was it 1975, 1985, or 1995? You want to guess? Give me a guess, John Henry. 
Well, I'm going to go ahead and go 95. That was a good year for me. <laughs> but I might be wrong. Who knows? It was a good year for you, but the answer is 1985. Oh, nice. And it was in the Astrodome, and the TSU Tigers actually won the game 19-7. to oh, Panthers hand it off, and they pick up about five yards there. That's Anderson again on the carry. So maybe it has something to do with the heat and the humidity, but both teams are using a lot of backs. And you're seeing them go in and out. That's Anderson. He's now had a couple of carries. The Tigers defense looking for a big stop here. Trey Green with the zone read. Doesn't hand it. He keeps it, and then he swung down right there by Jamal Lucas. It was that option read again. You saw where he looks like he was going to raise up and throw it again, but he took it on his own. Go ahead and pass it. Right Tiger. He raises it up. Tigers it on. read it read well, though. They stayed home. Lucas came up and made a big stop. Now you're looking at third and about four yards. Anderson in the backfield with Green. He tries the quick pass, has his man, and he's going to have the first down. That's number 87, DeMarco Lestraps. That young man's got some height. He goes at 6'4", about 215, so he's an easy target to find when you're yeah. looking over the middle. Pretty Again, big receivers. it was another third down conversion for the Panthers, too. This time the handoff inside, and Anderson has no place to go. Lucas again filling the hole. Big play by Jamal Lucas. Man, that was quick. I mean, the big tackle tried to pull out, and then there you got right there. You got That's the guys plugging the hole. They need to get off the field. It takes a toll on the defense being on the field as long as they have. We're down to 55, 52 seconds to go in the third quarter. Green hands to Anderson again, and Anderson around the outside breaks the tackle, still on his feet. Darius Moore finally helps to get him to the ground. It's feats of family. We had a blitz on by Claiborne on the outside, and it looked like they had a, a horse collar there. There is a flag, and you think that might be the horse power. Number 19, Raheem McMorris. Hold it. Interesting. That's good. Hold Raheem it. McMorris on the stop. Talk about some hard running right here, though. Anderson just kept on trucking. Jerry, Jarius Moore and some of his friends finally finishing off that uh, tackle right there. Raheem McMorris also in on the play, so that's going to be a big penalty on this drive because the, what would have been a first down is now going to be second and long. Trey Green. Hands it off to Courtney Brown, and he's upended right there by number 19, Raheem McMorris again. So we've mentioned his name a few times tonight. That, that little GF going on, the guard pulling around uh, with the F kick out, and he's just following his blockers. And that's going to do it. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. First half was real, real slow, but now it seems like it's picking up, hasn't it? We're going to come back with a big third down for the PV Panthers right now as we head to break. It's PV leading the TSU Tigers 24-3. Hello, I'm Alan Helfman, Vice President of River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge. This is my friend and customer, Miss Georgia Provost. 
River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Chrysler 300. River Oaks Chrysler Jeep and Dodge has the all new, totally redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee. Allen is the only car dealer I will ever buy a car from. Come see us at Kirby in the Southwest Freeway. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation. Making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Welcome back to BBVA Compass Stadium. You're watching the BB Panthers take on the Texas Southern Tigers. Here's our big couple of plays for BB right there down the stretch. It is 24 to 3. BB is leading Texas Southern. As we begin to start, get ready to start the fourth quarter. What has to happen here in the fourth quarter? I guess it starts right here with this first play. It's third and about 14 yards for Perry View A&M. Didn't make a big play right here and uh, get them to punt the ball and get off the field. Uh, Texas Southern got a chance to go take it down and score and be right back in this game. It's still a, long, a lot of time on the clock. They started the clock prematurely, but the officials right on top of that. Green in the pocket. Has some time, finds, has a man. For a second there, I thought it might be intercepted. Still on his feet and fighting for extra yards. That's Rayshon Givens. Man. Depends on the spot here. It might be up a little short, uh, but that second effort makes that it look like... That second effort made it pretty close. Number 27, Lucas had him. He got away from that tackler. Number 30, Archie Rice also in on the play. Mm, they gave the first down. And he got the first... They have done that a lot tonight. They've gotten the big conversions on third down. That's tough. Especially as third and 14 also. Green hands off inside. Looks like it's Courtney Brown. Courtney Brown, the senior from Lake Charles, went to LaGrange High School. Picked up nine yards on the play. Green floats one over, and it's incomplete. The ball was up in the air for just a second. He was trying to hit Raymond Jackson. Good play over there by number 19, Raheem McMorris. Third and short for the Panthers. Green yep. keeps, faked it to Abear, keep, keep, kept it, and picked up the first down. So the Tigers will move the sticks again. Damon King was in there making, making a play. You're looking at this, and right now, uh, Prairie View is kind of picking up the rushing yards. And then Courtney Brown, at the end of the third, he had 78 yards. And Trey Green, the quarterback, had 95. Hmm. 
Green hands to Abear, trying to get outside, slips a tackle, and he's taken down right there by number 23, Tino Thomas. But they're just using that one two punch. They go Abear, then they go Brown, and then Thomas with a nice takedown near the sideline. Trey Green hasn't had to throw that much in this game, but when he's had to pass, he's been fairly effective. 11 completions out of 24 attempts for 147 yards. Of course, he had that long of 43 yards. Green loses the football. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's going to be a late hit, and it's going to be a penalty against the Tiger. A little frustrated sitting in a little bit, I guess. It was a, it was a good play. In fact, he almost After lost the ball. Play, Correct. Late hit out of bounds. 33 defense. 15 yards added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. That was uh, Jarius Moore, the senior from North Shore. And as you can see, Amir Bloom had the pressure in the backfield. Correct. Let him slip away. And right there, Jarius Moore knocks him. I, I couldn't really see from that angle whether mm. he was already out of bounds or not. But Correct. I couldn't either. When in doubt, hold your water, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be another first down for the Panthers. Green going into the end zone, and mm. there's the flag. Clyde Lee, number 20, was on the coverage for Texas Southern. He never really got his head around. Let's see. It's probably going to be pass interference there. He's trying to go to Petrie, looking for that over the top. Pass interference. Defense, number 20, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. So the penalties have really helped the Panthers on, these dri on this drive particularly because they picked up a lot of yards there. The, that ball was underthrown. And sometimes you get pass interference when the ball is underthrown. Right. A lot of teams just like to throw the ball up and try to get that pass in the fence. First and goal at the seven. Pass into the end zone. The back shoulder throw is good for a touchdown to number 88 in the end zone. That's Nick Petrie. They came right back That's to cool. him, and that back shoulder throw is so hard to defend. It is. It really is. Uh, Warren Moon and Haywood Jeffries used to throw that, that route all the time. It's such a hard route to defend. Green, as you can see, Homer Kazi on the defense. Just couldn't get his head around. He was in pretty good position there. Just couldn't get his head around in time to see the ball. But there is a flag. Hmm. Now, apparently, let's... Sports line conduct. After the score, unsportsmanlike, number 88 offense, Conti, 15 yards, will be assessed on the kickoff. Referee Roderick Holloway calling taunting on the play. I think it was Petrie, the guy who made the touchdown. Right, a little extra quick activity, getting a little excited in the end zone. Houlihan is in for the extra point, and it is up and good. And the Prairie View Panthers now have 31 up on the board as we head to the break. It's the Panthers leading the Titans 31 to 3.
bond the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about men. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work. Together. Take a look at that last scoring drive by the PV Panthers. 12 plays, 80 yards, 5 minutes and 33 seconds. Trey Green, the pass into the end zone for the touchdown to Petrie. And of course he was hit with the taunting penalty, so that will take us to where we are. Should come up with a decent field position because of the penalty. Yeah, they should get a chance to get a nice mm -hmm. return on this one. Going to be kicking it off from the 35, looks like. Hands kick goes down to Austin Watts. He takes it out of the end zone from a yard deep. Watts has a seam, cuts it inside, trying to get back outside. And he's finally taken down at around the 37-yard line. <laughs> the kicker's going to be the lead tackler for the kickoff, kickoff team. Take a look at Watts on the return. Now, this is what you used to do. <laughs> you were a wedge buster, and you also, you know, set the wedge. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> TSU will go back to work around the 37-yard line. Boston motion. We have a new quarterback in the game. Avion Hurts, and he is yanked down. Davon Reed on the stop. This is a drive you'd really like to see the Tigers get something going. They're taking a look at another quarterback here. Avion Hertz, he's a junior from the Kilgore Commu Community College. It's number 18. This is going to be his. He's looking to pass. He has lots of time, and he's got a pretty strong arm. Oh, wow. And he had Larry Clark open and just missed him over the middle. See right there, the protection was excellent. Mm -hmm. And he had Clark breaking across. He just broke open a little late at the end, and he, the ball was already released. Looks like they rushed three and dropped eight. Surprised he was that wide open. But when you have that kind of time. Mm -hmm.
Hurts back to pass again, rolling to his right. Put a little pressure on it that time. They, they blitz. And he just threw it away. Hurts is from Houston, but as I said, he attended Kilgore Community College, so okay. he's getting a chance to take some snaps tonight. And the Tigers are looking at another uh, fourth down, so we're going to see Corey, Corey Carter again. His punt is high and deep. Panthers hauled it in. It's number 20. Great tap. Dominic Weaver. And Gary Holmes is there for the stop, but Weaver hauled it in, and he knew he'd have some room, but we have another flag down on the field. That is going to wipe out that nice return. See, the Tigers are getting some fresh faces into the football game. Well, don't miss the next TSU football game here at BBVA Compass Stadium as the Tigers take on Bacone College. That's coming up on September 11th at 7 p.m. Tickets are on sale now, so you know what to do. Log on to TSUball.com today to get your tickets. Tigers in action next Friday night. The Panthers have now made a quarterback move. Deatre Smiley, the guy who we thought was going to start the game, has come on, and he hands to Abair. Abair cuts it back over the middle and picks up 14 yards on the carry. Jarius Moore is up for the stop for TSU. Defense has played hard tonight. They've been on the field a lot, and they've, you know, really had to suck up a lot in this heat and humidity. Mm -hmm. DeAndre Smiley, uh, John Henry, just in case you're wondering, <laughs> he's a 6'2", 250-pound quarterback. He read my mind. <laughs> he read my mind. So you sure he's his quarterback or uh, you know, tight end? When the quarterback is 250, I mean, I, you know, how big does the defensive end have to be? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> read my mind. A bear on the carry, but he slipped down, and we're down to about the 10-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Second down and about 11 for the Panthers. Smiley in the gun, hands to Abair, and not much running room there at all. Picked up about three yards before he is knocked down there. Sekiru Asafatu on the stop for TSU. The linebacker in there quickly making the stop. Now we're looking at a third and seven for Smiley. Oh, bad snap. The, the ball must have hit somebody's leg because it never got back to Smiley at all. That's good. It's still a TSU break there. They needed that. So it's fourth down. Quick look, and he just oh, rolled, he just it, rolled back. it back. There. He, he was playing bowling while everybody else was <laughs> playing football, but he just he just rolled that thing back there. It's a good thing the running back was alert enough to fall on. Correct. Him. Because that big 250-pound guy <laughs> didn't make a move. <laughs> no, he didn't. Not one effort towards the ball. Malik Cross back to return the punt for the TSU Tigers. They'll get the ball back with about 8.35 to go.
We need a big play right here in special teams. And the whistle blows before Houlihan could get the punt away. Cross just looks at it and lets it go. Panthers wanted a timeout. I think he said that's the first of the second half. Mm -hmm. Considering they used all of them in the first quarter last <laughs> first half. <laughs> they used all of them in the first half as the Tigers go over to the sideline to talk it over. We're going to head to break with Prairie View out in front in this one. We'll be back with a lot more. I'm Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchie's. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. Think. Question. Cut. Compare. Learn something new. Debug something old. Hit a wall. And think again. Model. Plan. Spin. Discard. Now breathe. And keep going. Work till it's late. Then early. Then late again. Smile. Laugh. Rest. Regroup. Use technology. Use your hands. Use everything you've got. That's what it takes. When we send an IBW electrician to your job site, I expect my electrical worker to be neat. Uh, I expect him to be professional. I expect him to be on time. Uh, I expect him to be productive. I expect him to do everything in his power or her power to ensure that employer is successful. Uh, because what's going to get us more work is, is successful jobs. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. The A Compass Stadium where the Prairie View Panthers are about to punt the football away, we think, but they're going back to the huddle again. I'm Butch Alcindor along with John Henry Mills. We're watching the TSU Tigers take on the PV Panthers with Prairie View leading right now 31-3 in the fourth quarter. Houlihan's kick is high and deep. Cross giving chase. Had to go back. Oh. Makes the catch. Nice move. Has a crease. Malik Cross breaks it off. Still on his feet. Cross down the sideline. Picks up a couple of blocks. Cross breaks another tackler. And he's finally taken down. A big hit. But what a return by Malik Cross. But there's another penalty flag on the field. He is stopped by Tommy Robbins Jr. there. But what a run. Yes. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield. Offense. Five yards will be assessed to the end of the run. First down, Texas Southern. What a run. Yes. I mean, in the special teams That's plays. That's exactly what they needed right there. Such an important part of the game. And he, he really flipped the whole field. Mm hmm You can see Cross just makes the catch. He had to retreat like 15 yards, and then he, it's all Malik Cross after that. Breaking tackles, spinning oh. away, mm -hmm. picking up a couple of blocks near the sideline, and he has set the Tigers up in good position. Matthew Butler in the backfield with the new quarterback. Butler and Hurts in the backfield. Hertz gives it to Butler. He has a lot of little room there around the right side, and he picks up a nice game. Tackle by Joshua Holly. He had some running room, though. Avion Hertz trying to make the most out of his time in the ball game. Hurts back to pass, looking into the end zone, and he has a man for the touchdown. That is number 80 
flags are down. And it's Derek Griffin, the big 6-7 receiver. Pass interference. Offense, number 80. 15-yard uh. penalty. Replay, second down. That was an exciting play. Right. He much hurts. That's a pretty good looking pass. And oh boy. There's a little contact, but what do you think, John Henry? It's pretty close. I mean I don't know. Sometimes you gotta let him play football. Yes, sir. It is football. So that's gonna bring up second down and 19 yards to go. Nice catch by the freshman. Hurts in trouble, under pressure, scrambles up the middle and makes a short gain. Brandon Medina is the guy that came in and made the stop there. I like this Derek Griffin. I'd like to see them get the ball to him more. Mm -hmm. He's it looks like he has some skills. And anytime you got a 6 7 receiver, that's, that's a pretty tempting yeah. target. They targeted him early in the, game, in the game. He just missed a lot of passes. Got third and 14 for TSU. Hurts flushed out of the pocket, makes a beautiful pass Great over the middle. Catch. And he has his man, Larry Clark, the third, with a fine catch Great coming catch. across. Cross did a great job coming back to the ball, but look at Hertz keeping his eyes downfield while he's scrambling out to the left. Yeah, he just didn't give up on the play. He just kept looking, kept looking. I mean, looked like he was going to step out of bounds. At the last second, he picked that head up and found his man, Larry Clark, open. Tigers now with a first and goal. Let it go. Hurts has a man, and it's Clark, and he's in for the touchdown. Avion Hurts coming in, rolling a little bit to his left, spotting his man, and you called it. He saw you had him all the way. Completed the pass for the TSU touchdown. Tell us what's going on here. Right here, just a quick little rollout. Flash is wide open. Got out leverages outside, outside the cornerback. Touchdown. Easy pitch and throw. Little pick route right there. So they could have called a flag on that. I don't know if you saw that. Good play for the TSU Definitely. touchdown. Great catch. Great two catches. Going for two. Now the Tigers are going to go for two. Hurts in the gun. Same route. Same Avion play. Avion rolling Same. to his right. Can't find a man. Looks over the middle. Oh, what a catch. catch. What a great catch by Malik Cross. Cross. Reached out with one hand and yanked it in for the two-point conversion. That was nice. Good job of Hertz. He was under pressure, kept looking, kept looking, and, and Cross stuck that one hand out and yanked it in. Yeah, way to keep the composure there. You called, you said it was the same play. All right. So the Tigers add the two-point conversion, and right now it's Prairie View 31 and TSU 11 with 6.09 to go in the fourth quarter. How about that Avion Hurts coming in off the game? He had no idea how much time he would play tonight or if he would play at all, but that's a very good indication of what you have to do as a player. You have to keep yourself prepared because you never know when your number is going to be called. Exactly. So when your number is called, you've got to take full advantage of that, and he has done it. It'll be interesting next week what the decision they, they, they go with as far as the starting quarterback as this, as this young man comes in and plays like this. You can see the scoring drive here. Four plays, 24 yards, and Avion Hurts just made a couple of really nice passes there on the move. Very mobile quarterback, and the touchdown goes to Larry Clark in the end zone. And then watch this catch by Malik Cross. My goodness, back over the middle, cross reaches up, yanks it in. What a grab for the two-point conversion. A little onside kick here. 
And it's recovered by number 42 for the Panthers. John Allen, the H-back, is right there for the recovery. That's a good idea. You know, like Herm Edwards says, you play to win the game. Exactly. So you never stop trying. You, you go never for that one-side kick to try to make something happen. Backup quarterbacks back in the game. So TSU goes back on defense again, and they have a couple of new faces out there, but most of the starters are still in the game. That's correct. Snap is back to the big oh. quarterback, Smiley, and he fumbled the ball, picked it up, and then, then the truck started. <laughs> and then it was like start the Mack truck exactly. because he, that guy is a load to bring down. Several Tigers on the play. Gary Holmes, number 53, was there with some help from his friends. Smiley's had uh, trouble with those snaps tonight. Yes, he has. I, mean, I guess the last one wasn't his fault. It was the center who rolled it back. So. <laughs> PV looking at a second and two. Smiley hands inside. It's Anderson, and he's just pushing and driving those legs forward. And he's finally taken down by number 27, Jamal Lucas. Lucas still playing hard tonight. Well, those are quick feet right there, huh? Yes, it is. And he took the handoff and just made a quick little cut around the first guy. Tigers will go first and 10 after that run. Deatre Smiley again bobbles the snap, puts on a move though, and hit the big fella got around the outside, bounces off a tackle. Jeez. You don't see a big guy that nimble. Archie Rice finally got him down. Number 52, Darius Stapleton took a big shot at him and he bounced right off. Right there. Yes, he did. So the Panthers get another first and ten and the fact that he can't even take the snap clean is not really bothering him too much right now. <laughs> Smiley gives it to Anderson, has a little crease, and he is hit down hard. Yes, he is. Jarius Moore. Plug in that hole. But the senior from North Shore has quite a few tackles tonight. You know, you said it on the top. When you talk about a rivalry, um, you really can't predict what's going to happen mm -hmm. because there's so many other factors involved with the game today. And, and, the and PV came to play. Anderson takes the handoff, slips away from one guy, dives inside for a short game. Anderson. Darius Stapleton is there again, and that time he got him down. See, right now it looks like they're just trying to kill some of that clock. Anderson's a good-looking back, though. He's made the most of his limited uh, time here tonight. Definitely. Smiley back with a pass, and he throws it high. Intended for number 17. Mm -hmm. So Kendrick Biddings, Biddings with an attempt to reception on the play.
getting to look at a lot of things like this, but you can also learn a lot of things from a game like this because you go back and you look at the tape and you, and you see a lot of things that, wow, we were in position here and we just didn't make the play. We came so close. And that's Anderson again on another carry. Wow. And he's running hard, man. He's, he's turning those legs, getting all the way down. It's fourth and eight there. In the Inside the 10, a big play by Anderson. <laughs> right around the outside. And, you know, some of those missed tackles only come after you get, you know, extremely tired. Demetrius Johnson finally got him down to the ground. Panthers are rolling up that clock again. Smiley gives it back to Anderson, and he gets through the crease. Jarius Moore had him. He slipped away, takes it all the way to the goal line. Tino Thomas helping to drag him down at the goal line. It's, what are they doing here? They're just pounding the football, yes, right? Yes, they just are. That's all the they're clock. doing. I mean, they're, like you said, they're working the clock. They're, they're taking the time as they come up to come up. To, come up. Smiley to Anderson again, and he's fighting for that end zone, and he's in for the touchdown. He runs real hard. Anderson hit in the backfield, but they could not stop him. Look at the drive and the effort. Fights his way in for the Prairie View touchdown. Demetrius Johnson had a shot trying to drag him down, could not get the big fella down. TSU Tigers are still fighting, though. They're fighting, but it was, it was a good night for the Panthers. And right. uh, Daryl Asbury would be the first guy to walk over there and shake their hands and said, you guys played a whale of a game tonight. Houlihan with the extra point, and it is good. So now the PV Panthers are out in front, 38 to 11. Darius Moore and teammates going off the field. They're a little tired on defense, the TSU defense. Right now, they are trailing the Panthers 38 to 11. We'll be back for the final minutes. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Welcome back. We're at the BBVA Compass Stadium. We are back where the Panthers are getting set to kick it off here in the th fourth quarter. Brad Woodard is late to return it, back to return it for the Tigers. Demetrius Johnson also going to get a shot on this kickoff return. Houlihan's kick 
and is taken down by number 10, Austin Watts. Watts tiptoeing down the sideline, and he makes a big gain all the way up to the 36-yard line. So Austin Watts getting his shot on the return and making good. Let's see who comes back in at quarterback this time. What did you try, guys try to do in games like this? I mean, uh, the Oilers had a few of those every once in a while. Not not too many. Definitely, definitely. But you know, right, right now, you know, as, in the office, as you come back out, you just want to make sure you, you know, make sure you stay healthy. I mean, the game's it's not too far out of control in the sense that you can't make a couple plays, but you want to stay healthy and still execute. Avion Hurts back in at quarterback. Rolling to his left. He's looking deep. He cranks it way down there. Has a man. And it's complete. A big catch right there. How about that play? He finds Derek Griffin. The freshman from Terry High School. Avion Hurst is just cranking out the hits. First down for the Tigers. That was a great throw. That was a great I mean, throw. And he, he, it's very obvious that he throws extremely well off the run because he's rolling out to his left, got his body turned, and threw a strike down the sideline. That little out and up there by Darius. This time he pulls up, sets himself, fires into the end zone, and it's a little high. Pass is incomplete, looking for Griffin again. It looked like Darius ran the wrong route because it looked like a smash route. Darius should have run a um, hitch in the corner route by the by – Number 13, a smash route. So I think Darius ran the wrong route by running into the end zone. Took his defender down there. Tigers looking at a second and 10. Clock shows a minute and 48 left in this one. Scrambling out to his right. Avion fires incomplete. That's a pretty heads up play right there. Lots of pressure by Davon Reed and company up there, but he knew he had nowhere to go with that one, so he really unloaded it in a hurry. Notice he was rolling right again, looking to mm -hmm. Griffin's side. It looks like it was, it was a blitz there. Um, Griffin should have broke off his route. It was a hot read. Um, he would have been wide open over the middle. Derek Griffin, the young fella from Terry, he'll learn. He's, he's just a freshman. Ooh. Looking for him again in the back of the end zone. Uh, he goes up, and it's incomplete, but there's a flag down uh, in the backfield big, right near the quarterback. Big hit by number 34. A uh, big hit. <laughs> 34 Joshua Holly. Mm -hmm. They may have called targeting on that one because I think he went helmet to helmet on it. Pass deep into the end zone and he just ran out of real estate. Officials are still talking about it. What did they call? Did they call holding? They say it's fourth down, so. Must have called holding on um, T TSU. Fourth down for the Tigers. Hurts in the gun. Fourth and ten. Fires high. And it's almost yeah. intercepted yeah. by Prairie View. That was number 24, <laughs> Foster Brown, who had his hands on it, and he had a lot of real estate in front of him if yes, he hung did. on to it. Blitzer, so the Blitzer Panthers coming again. Panthers will take over the ball on the turnover. Pretty sure it'll be some sort of victory formation here.
All right, there goes the whistle. PV ready to crank this thing up. There you go. You made the call. 123 <laughs> left. This is a great series, and it, 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 there's so many people, there's so many connections on each sideline, connections between TSU and PV, PV and TSU, and uh, it's, it's really nice. You know, one sideline is going to be very happy, another sideline is going to be very sad. That's, uh, you know, but at the end, they're going to line up and do it again next year. Exactly, it's, it's, exactly. it's a really, really good series. Mm -hmm. And if like and like you said earlier, it'll be interesting to see what happens with it. Avion Hurts. I mean, he came in and played really well. Now mm -hmm. it was a, a different environment when he got in the ball game, but some of the plays he made, scrambling around, throwing by, you know, back, finding the open receivers, keeping your head downfield. Correct. I mean, some of those things were were really, really good things. Uh, he did himself well. He took advantage of an opportunity tonight. Mm -hmm. We're down the final 26. Give me some of your thoughts, John Henry. Well, definitely, T -T, um, the both teams have some um, things they need to work on because there's a lot of penalties during this game that, 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 that they need to overcome. Uh, but that's what first games are all about. So you get you get to go back to the drawing board on, board on Monday. I uh, know all those things that you did wrong. Hey, and come back and play the next week. And that is the end of the ball game. And you see the two head coaches meeting at midfield. Willie Simmons and Coach Daryl Asbury from TSU. A nice handshake there after the game. Final score from BBVA Compass Stadium tonight. Prairie View Panthers knocking off the TSU Tigers. Final score with 38 to 11. Coach Asbury will go back to the drawing board. They will take this tape. See players congratulating each other. That's Bubba McDowell, your former teammate. Yes, sir. He worked at uh, TSU for a while. Just a good series. PV did a lot of good things tonight. They ran the football well, and they made some key plays on defense. They had some big turnovers when they needed to get the turnovers tonight. All right, and that's the final score from BBVA Compass Stadium tonight. The PV Panthers knocking off the Tigers from TSU. 38 to 11. Post game show is coming up. smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens.
Welcome to our post-game show. The Labor Day Classic is history. The 31st Labor Day Classic is history as PV came on and knocked off TSU 38-11 to was the final score. It was a game that was very close in the first half and kind of got out of hand a little bit in the second half. Yeah, and the defense, defense played really, really good the first half I mean, on both sides of the ball. Uh, just a few key mistakes in the second half. I mean, they just, and they just took it away. Big rivalry here, but let's go down on the field now for the trophy presentation. We're going to sit down in the field for our trophy presentation. How oh, simple? Okay. How oh, simple? Our mission when we got here was to give you guys 
a group of men that were representing this institution in a first class manner. And they're doing that with everything they do on the field, on the field, in the classroom. And I'm just so proud to be their head coach. And again, it's the one of many. And uh, I go to get it back to where the Billy Nicks took this team, you know, a long time ago. And with hard work and dedication, we're well on our way. Again, one time I should say it. And that was rookie head coach Willie Simmons getting his career off to a, a very good start over at PV with that big win. But we're going to go straight to the highlights and check out exactly how they got the big 38-11 to 11 win tonight. We will start right here. We'll pick it up right there with Bear on the carry. And look at Darius Moore leading the charge on defense as the Tigers stacked him up. But the PV offense did a great job on third down. That one to DeMarco Lestraps. The big fella hauled it in for a big first down, and then it's another completion. This time to the little speedy wide receiver who made the most of it, a big play down the stretch. And then how about Trey Green going in for the touchdown, a nice push right there. He had a fine game, didn't he? Yes, he did, Trey Green. So did this guy. How about Brad Woodard? Brad Woodard, hey, he won his special team standout, and at the end of the game, he just stepped up. Hey, he's, he's the guy that look, look forward to seeing this season. And this was one of those plays that, that kind of turned things around. The pressure and then the interception by James Paul Bryant. Definitely. I mean, I mean, it looks like he could have um, held on the ball and just took, taken a sack, but he threw it away anyway. A Bear just waltzes in for the touchdown right there on the sweep. He scored. And then Avion Hurts came in off the bench, and he did a good job at quarterback. He made some fine plays like that throw over the middle of Larry Clark for the first down. And then he you called this one. Hey, just threw it into the end zone. Hey, he's wide open. And they came back and did the exact same thing on the two-point conversion. This is Avion Hurts, and what a catch right there by Malik Cross. A great catch. Anderson just showing a lot of power, banging his way into the end zone. As we take a look at the stats, it may show what we saw on the scoreboard. 38-11 Prairie View, and then you look at the stats, 457 total yards compared to 291. When you look at the rushing yards, and we said on the top, PV was going to run the ball a lot, and they did, 290 to 107. Exactly. I mean, by them running the ball and using multiple running backs to, to accomplish this goal, they're going to do this all season. First game, Labor Day Classic for 2015 in his history, and it was the PV Panthers coming out in front, 38 to 11. For John Henry Mills, I'm Butch Alcindor. So long.